show that passes. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll turn our attention to C-2015-11. It's a preliminary resolution uh, declaring an economic uh, revitalization area for the, the old brewery. Good and afternoon. Chris. For the record, Chris Kenneth, the Growth Alliance, requesting council approval. Preliminary resolution C-2015-11 for declaring an economic revitalization area and property tax phase-in on real and personal property investment by O. Evansville Brewery Development, LLC. Site development project passes. is to retrofit and modernize the former Sterling Brewery facility into a state-of-the-art commercial office structure. Now we'll structure turn our attention to while maintaining the industrial charm established in the original uh, outside architecture. Preliminary resolution. Currently, uh, the building is vacant, uh, functionally obsolete, and has deteriorated the, substantially and requires extensive renovation. Good afternoon. This is planned to be completed. For the record, Chris Kenneth, the Growth Alliance, requesting the vacant building approval. located at preliminary resolution C-2015-11 for an economic revitalization area and first two tax phase in four-story building on real Will be configured to include the brewery development LLC. Site development the project is to retrofit and modernize 22 offices and 12 brewery conference rooms into a state-of-the-art commercial office structure. Now we'll turn our attention to the C-2015-11 for the original outside architecture. Preliminary resolution. Currently, the building is vacant and functionally obsolete. Its preparation and construction are extensive and required to be completed. For the record, Chris Kenneth of the Alliance requested the proposed tenant is as a preliminary resolution C-2015-11 for the original residential agreement is contingent on receiving tax fees on real Will be commanded to visual SSNC for organic growth. In the midwest, the project is to serve as a modernized 22 offices and seize the conference rooms of various state-of-the-art commercial offices and private stores to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm of the original outside of the building. It is SSNC to maintain the industrial charm Real will be commanded to this success on the for organic growth. The state of Indiana has found the ability to use the rental set of the market to enhance the cost of the two other companies that have been very stable in their commercial and operational private storage and the state of Indiana has found the ability to use the rental set of the market to enhance the cost of the two other companies that have been very stable in their commercial and operational private storage and the state of Indiana has found the ability to use the rental set of the market to enhance the cost of the two other companies that have been very stable in their commercial and operational private storage and the state of Indiana has found the ability to use the rental set of the market to enhance the cost of the two other companies that have been very stable in their commercial and operational private storage and the state of Indiana has found the ability to use so it's been awarded a few times down here, but it requires a 50-year-old building rehab. It's called the, we call it the Dino, and it's contingent on this patching to a large degree what the local uh, units are, you're doing by this phase-in uh, for this property. So we're really excited. Um, uh, th this will get through two floors, and we've got a couple more floors to go. And um, as, as many of you know, I think some of you have toured the building. The top floor, you can see the river. It's pretty cool. So be happy to answer any questions. Mike Morrow is here uh, uh, with Mr. Rogers' company. He's the, bill, the construction manager on this, uh, if you have any particular questions. so I, I thought a, it was known as the dinosaur thing rather than the dino. Dino. Had to be built in the Jurassic period. Yes, it was 50 years ago. Right. That would include you and I, Doc. No, <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> that you include you. I'm in that category. <laughs> so, um, okay. Anyway, it's... Uh, um, yeah, I think it's a great project for the community, and it fits right in this corridor. If you look what we're, what's happening on this corridor from Deaconess to Barry Plastics and Hair Higher, and, and then this, it's it's pretty, pretty neat to see the Lloyd Expressway and the near north side, uh, seeing some of the success we're seeing in the uh, downtown area too. Well, I think so. we've seen. I want to say that we talked about gateways into downtown yeah. uh, a few years back, and this is certainly one of the predominant gateways into the into that. I think you'd say Walnut would be one and you have, you know, D. Patrick going there, you have uh, this development at the on Fulton, you know, still have the Barry area uh, coming in from First Avenue, but I think that's uh, yeah, higher. So. Yeah. 
hires going in there. And so. you know, the, obviously the library did well, or is a public project, so right in the middle of all that also did a lot of improvements. So pretty excited. Uh, I think there's more to come. Uh, and this is a real, real, real important step. Uh, and I just wanted to, to add to what uh, Chris had to say that the state stepped up as well. Um, what well, was uh, it was uh, confirmed last week with Chris and I. So a lot of hard work by Chris. We appreciate everything that the staff's done to help us along the way. Uh, Mike, is there anything to add? Kyle can speak to the jobs more than anyone. So Any I think most of you've met members of council. Yes. Hey, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Are, um, is the company going to vacate completely their existing location off of? It's a phase process, but I'm going to let now. Kyle answer that, okay? Sure. So there's a, yeah, it's going to be a phased out process of the two existing downtown locations. So we have Innovation Point and right. we have Third and Locust. So we will be phasing out, and by the end of 2016, we will be in this new building. Okay. And, and what are, what's your current staffing level? Currently, we're at 189 employees. Okay. So we have 21 open recs. So that puts us at 210. We look to fill those over the next two months. We have a, a big interview blitz that we do in October for December as well as May graduates. And uh, we've had quite a bit of success in the past. We've hired anywhere from 15 to 25 people in the fall blitz. And then what's your uh, staffing number that you're going to, is it 300 that you'll be at within how? That's right. Yeah, yeah it's going to be over. 360, and then the goal is to continue to grow, right? It's a forecast. We've, we've got, we're very excited about Evansville. We've continued to grow, and, and I think we, we're very bullish. Yeah, so. no, it's, it's nice to see. What's that giant piece of <laughs> metal? That's I've a had, great question. Still, still. <laughs> I think it's, a, it's an old thing. I've ask <laughs> what's going to happen to that. We, we've asked to have it removed eventually. Yeah, it's a nice talking Isn't piece. Isn't that recyclable? I, mean, we see. I think it's worth a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, scrap. I would think, but I, I've had like people ask what the, what that was and where it was going, so yeah. thank you. No problem. That, that's a really sensitive issue to some. It will probably end up saved somewhere at, as possibly a museum piece. That's a brewery, somewhat historic, but it is copper, so it's worth... You know, it, it could yeah. be, but I, the intent is to try It's only still and, there because of its sheer weight. We're, we're, no, it's not. It's there to it's I mean, in terms of someone reasons. running off with it. No, it, but we, the, I think it's Mr. Rogers. It's not a piece. I think he has, I think he has some vision along that line. So I don't think he'd want us to have in the record it's going to be scrapped just yet. That's okay, all right. That's a good I answer. I think there is. It, you know, if the museum or someone would like to look at it, but I think there's a, a plan to do something. Okay. So. Any other questions or comments? Yes. I just want to add, I just want to commend Jack Rogers and his staff. I mean, what you're doing on that corner is just phenomenal, and it looks great. And I'm glad to see you taking pride in Evansville and, and doing what you're doing. So thank you. Thank you. I, I've mentioned on the record before, I've worked with Jack for uh, over 30 years. I was an intern for he and Mr. Kemp when I was at U of E as a student. So. I'm likewise I'm proud. So. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Do I have a motion to accept? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Um, we'll get to the comments at That's right. the other part. Can it, would it be okay if... Show it moves forward with a due pass. Yeah. Do we need to stay given the vote was unanimous? Because uh, um, Fields would like to get to Chicago. That's why I'm asking. Well, uh, let me just ask the, any members of the, of the community uh, who's in the audience, would anybody want to speak to this at this point? There's actually a second public hearing. This is the preliminary, so we come back for the public hearing, right. as you recall, and tax phase ends. Sure. Where, where the, where there will be a remonstration uh, opportunity, opportunity then, so that's why I'm asking. Yeah. But tonight. if I don't see any uh, comments or anything else, then I think it would Thank be you. safe to say that you can okay. get on with your lives. All right? Thank you. Thank you. And just for the record, show that C-2015-11 passes unanimously. Now we'll turn to C-2015-12 uh, for uh, sort of the same sort of thing for Pioneer Development. Chance? Hello, Chance Eisman with the Growth Alliance. Uh, uh, same, as you said, same sort of uh, idea except for a little bit different. Uh, this one we're actually looking at a residential tax phase in. 
what this project uh, and concerning the, we do the processing for this, so I would not claim to do this to be my area of expertise. Uh, however, I have reached out to Kelly Coors uh, and got uh, some semblance of this is a proper project to move forward, as well as I believe he now has a letter of support from the mayor as well. Uh, this is uh, a property on 607 East Iowa Street. Uh, it's a former school building that he's looking to use Section 42 federal tax credits to turn into uh, 45 unit uh, affordable rental housing. Um, this is a competitive process. I believe the last time the city of Evansville or Vandenberg County received these tax credits was about three years ago. Uh, may have been Terry's project actually um, and the Cedar Trace projects um, which are some of his former developments. Uh, with this, we're looking at um, support to match the, the federal, uh, which is required by statute, uh, and that we ask for a 10-year tax phase in, uh, traditionally scheduled um, with investment of approximately a million dollars uh, and generating a positive economic impact of about $7 million. Uh, if I do have Terry Keish from Pioneer Development here to speak more directly about the actual project. And this is located in my ward. If you guys remember, I don't know if any of you took the time to drive by the the church and, and the school that's been empty for a while. It's a significantly depressed area that, I mean, starting somewhere uh, with an upgrade in some decent housing would be would really be wonderful, actually. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be part of what you put together on the good neighbor um, Thing they're going to join that. Am I correct with that? That is correct. Yeah. And just so people understand, this is the old St. Joe School, right? Correct. Correct. Uh, again, my name is Terry Keish with Pioneer Development Services. Um, we are uh, intending to convert to an adaptive reuse conversion of the former St. Joseph uh, Catholic School building and, and gymnasium, uh, converting it in, into 45 uh, affordable housing rental units. Uh, consisting of one, two, and, and just a few three-bedroom units uh, with the school right down the street. It's literally a half a block from the elementary school, it's, so it will be a, a family development located you know, very, very near uh, to that school. Uh, we are investing uh, approximately $7.5 million uh, to convert uh, the property. Um, and other than that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. We have met with, uh, or I have met with several of the neighbors. Um, I heard some concerns and addressed those and will continue to do so. Um, I'm also scheduled to attend the Jacobsville Neighborhood Improvement Association meeting tomorrow evening to discuss it with the neighbors even further. And what, what sort of concerns did the uh, neighbors bring up? Uh, there was a misconception that we were putting 45 units on the parking lot across Iowa Street. It's a brand new, you know, new buildings being erected. Um, once I can confirm or, or inform them that the 45 units will be in the school building, uh, they seem to be uh, very satisfied with that. Any other questions of members of council? Uh, anybody in the audience comment on this? All right. Seeing none, we have a motion to accept. So moved. moved. Yeah, I'm sorry. And second? Motion. Motion from Doc Adams okay. and Councilman Riley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Show carries a due pass. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And with that, yes. And with that, we will go ahead and close the Finance Committee. We have a slight delay, folks. We're, we're going to be streaming this uh, uh, tonight, which is wonderful. This is something that uh, a number of us wanted the committees to have streaming, and it's and thanks to Mark Yuren, it's happening. I think that's great. Um, 
this this nice lady will let me know when we can go on. We're all okay, super. The Honorable Council of the City of Evans will hereby call to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman McGinn? Here. Councilwoman Mosby? Here. Councilwoman Brinkerhoff Riley? Here. Councilwoman Robinson? Here. Councilman Friends? Here. Councilman Lindsay? Here. Councilman O'Daniel? Here. Councilman Weaver? Here. Councilman Adams? Here. There being um, nine members present, zero absent, and the nine members representing a quorum, I hereby call this session of the Common Council officially be opened. Uh, tonight we're going to give as a gesture of grace, uh, have Russ Lloyd uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Fellow Councilmen and those in the audience, welcome to the September 14th meeting, this being the 17th meeting of the year. Um, do we have any students in the audience tonight? If there are, um, come up and we'll sign your chits at the end. City Attorney is Scott Danks. Uh, Sergeant of Arts is Officer Curry again. Thank you, sir. Approval of the minutes. Uh, uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of August 24th meeting for the Common Council as written? <coughs> All those in favor? Opposed? So be it. Reports and communications. In your August 6th packet, City Council meeting agenda and committee meeting schedule for September 14th, 2015. Ordinances F, 2015-13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. G, 2015-24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And R, 2015-24. Resolution C, 2015-13, July 2015 Financial Report, Area Plan Commission Report and Meeting Minutes dated August 13th, 2015, ESG, CDBG, Home, CAC, Mayor's Funding Recommendations for the year 2016, Email Material, City Council Meeting Minutes for August 24th, 2015, CIO Joint Budget Hearing Response to City Council, James Fisher Affidavit, on your desk this evening, extended agenda and ordinance card 2015-29. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Scott Dansk and his office for really producing a huge amount of legislation at this meeting and the next. That's a really an amazing uh, output. Is there a motion to receive, file, and make those reports and communications part of the minutes of the meeting? We have a, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So be it. Consent agenda, first reading of ordinances and resolutions. Ordinance G, 2015-24, an ordinance fixing the salaries of every appointed officer, employee, deputy, assistant, departmental, and institutional head of the city of Evansville, and the Evansville Vandenberg County Levy Authority for the year 2016 in establishing salary administration procedures. Ordinance G, 2015-25, an ordinance amending section 6.05.040 of the Evansville Municipal Code, Animal Control. Ordinance G, 2015-26, an ordinance amending section 3.35.040 of the Evansville Municipal Code Housing Trust Fund. Ordinance G, 2015-27, an ordinance amending section 2.8 of the Evansville Municipal Code Greenway Advisory Board. Ordinance G, 2015-28, an ordinance amending section 9.10.020 of the Evansville Municipal Code Fireworks. Ordinance F, 2015-13, an ordinance to the Common Council of the City of Evansville authorizing transfers of appropriations, additional appropriations, and repeal and reappropriations of funds for various city funds. Ordinance F, 2015-14, an ordinance to the Common Council of the City of Evansville approving the annual community development plan and appropriating community development block grant, emergency solutions grant, and home investment partner program grant funds. Ordinance F, 2015-15, an ordinance to the Common Council of the City of Evansville authorizing appropriations of funds within various departments. Ordinance F, 2015-16, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Evansville, Indiana, fixing the salaries of elected officials for the City of Evansville, Indiana, for the year 2016. Ordinance F, 2015-17, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Evansville, Indiana, appropriating monies for the purpose of defraying expenditures of departments of the city government for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2016. 
Ordinance F 2016-18, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Evansville, appropriating monies for the purpose of defraying the expenditures of the Evansville Vanderburg Levy Authority District for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2016. Ordinance F 2015-19, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Evansville, approving and adopting the 2006 budget for the Port Authority of Evansville. Ordinance R 2015-24, an ordinance rezone certain real estate in the City of Evansville, State of Indiana, more commonly known as 4201 Stringtown Road, Petitioner or Old North United Methodist Church, Incorporated. <coughs> is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda as written? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? So be it. Um, is there a motion to suspend the rules to hear Ordinance F 2015-14 on all three readings this evening? And just so everybody understands, this is the, uh, the home money, the CDGB money, and uh, I know that um, Councilwoman Robinson has indicated she would not be available on the 28th. I think she's an integral part of of this and and so uh, I think in deference to her and I know she spent a lot of time on it finished the meeting last week um, and has uh, has spoken with me and several others as part of it uh, I would I would make such a motion I have a second right. thank you roll call please councilman McGinn aye. councilwoman Mosby aye councilwoman Brinkoff Riley aye councilwoman Robinson aye Councilman Friends? Aye. Councilman Lindsay? Aye. Councilman O'Daniel? Aye. Councilman Weaver? Aye. Councilman Adams? And being 11 ayes and zero nays, and I want to thank you all for doing that, Ordinance F 2015-14 will be heard on all three readings this evening. Hmm? Did I? I'm, st I'm still in area plan. Thank you. Sorry, I'm still in area plan. Stick with me, kids. Anyway, <laughs> there being nine days. There is also a request that came in today for Ordinance F 2015 15 to be held in all three readings. I didn't know if you guys wanted to vote on that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, fourteen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that is a motion. It's it's moving a hundred thousand of CDBG into the market garden. That's for the community fresh market. It was emailed, and I'll uh, make that motion. Second. <coughs> we have a roll. Roll call. Councilman McGinn? Aye. Councilwoman Mosby? Aye. Councilwoman Brinkerhoff Riley? Aye. Councilwoman Robinson? Aye. Councilman Friends? Aye. Councilman Lindsay? Aye. Councilman O'Daniel? Aye. Councilman Weaver? Aye. Councilman Adams? There being nine ayes and zero nays, this passes. Second reading. Page six. Consent agenda, second reading of zoning ordinances. Ordinance R 2015-19, an ordinance to rezone certain real estate in the city of Evansville, state of Indiana, more commonly known as 2141 East Riverside, petitioner Jose Rivera. This petition comes forward with recommendation for approval with use and development commitment from Area Plan Commission having eight affirmative votes, three opposing votes, and one abstention. Ordinance R 2015-20, an ordinance to rezone certain real estate in the city of Evansville, state of Indiana, more commonly known as 7501 Telephone Road, Petitioner Mob LLC. This petition comes forward with recommendation from approval with the use and development commitment from the Area Plan Commission having 12 affirmative votes. Ordinance R 2015-21, an ordinance to rezone certain real estate in the city of Evansville, state of Indiana, more commonly known as 211, 213, 217, 221, 223, and 225 Wagner. Petitioner Memorial <coughs> Community Development Corporation. This petition comes forward with a recommendation for approval from Area Plan Commission having 12 affirmative votes. Is there a motion to adopt a consent agenda second reading of zoning ordinances and to accept the Area Plan Commission's report? So moved. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
Council now stands at third reading of zoning ordinances, which is a final action. Regular agenda, third reading of zoning ordinances, ordinance R 2015-19, an ordinance to rezone certain real estate in the city of Evansville, state of Indiana, more commonly known as 2141 East Riverside Drive, petitioner Jose Rivera. My name is Jose Rivera. I purchased uh, 2141 East Riverside, and it's currently zoned R1, and I'm looking forward to uh, have it rezoned to C4 with the use and development uh, paperwork. Council members, um, I just want to add that, uh, and I do want to talk to area plan as well. Um, this property, as long as I can remember, has always been a commercial piece of property. Um, it, it was a gas station for the longest time. Um, my grandparents were at Baking Kathleen. I drove by here every Sunday on the way to see them um, with my parents. Uh, and after talking with area plan, uh, they've always had it zoned residential with a commercial piece of property running there. So it was never zoned correctly. Um, I know that uh, Eastview Neighborhood Association is in favor of this rezoning. Um, I have had some remonstrators in the last couple of weeks call me with some concerns. Um, but, you know, after talking back and forth, and, and I do want to hear what the remonstrators have to say, um, but I know that Jose has gone in there. This is not what this piece of property used to look like. It really was a blight of the neighborhood and an eyesore. He has gone in there, removed shrubs, done all kinds of, of things to you know, that's how it, it was looking, um, to, to beautify it and make it a nice piece of property. And Janet. Any other, sorry. Could, can, I, could I have Janet speak for just a minute? Janet Greenwell with Area Plan. Um, just wanted to double check. This has never actually been zoned commercial, correct? It has never been zoned commercial. It was built in 1955. And the, that area of the city was annexed in 1959. Okay. In 1959, when it was annexed, all the pre-existing commercial buildings became R1s and became what we call legal non-conformings or be grandfathered in. And the gas station did operate there until about 1990, I believe. Uh, there was a prior attempt to rezone it. Yes. that was eventually withdrawn. But uh, in fairness, that prior uh, rezoning was asking to zone not only the gas station, but pr property to the east and to the south of it. <coughs> a couple well. other parcels, parcels that were residential. Par parcels that were residential. Okay. The, we still consider it a legal non-conforming, but a tire shop, and the car repair shop that tried to go in before are considered higher uses. And uh, legal non-conforming can continue, but they can only continue as equal or lesser uses. So there was a need to rezone the property. Gas stations used to be allowed in a light commercial or neighborhood commercial. And that um, kind of kicked out any other use of the building. So it's been sitting vacant for a long time. Okay. Thank you. Ma'am, could you explain to me again why this wasn't grandfathered in in 1960? It was. It was grandfathered in, and it was allowed to continue to operate until okay. it, I got it voluntarily okay. closed. But it was, it was always it. residential yeah. and yes. not. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from council? I guess. You know, the question I have is, and, and it's actually the concerns that have been addressed to me from various people down Riverside and the like. Tire shops have a way of accumulating lots and lots of tires that, you know, bring rodents and other eyesores. Where are you going to store these tires? I mean, because you know there will be. Yes. My so, tires will be stored inside the building. If I need to have a container, I will purchase a container and have it stored in the back of the building. I was told that if I do purchase a container, and have it stored in the back of the building that I would need to uh, put up a fence. 
around right. the property. No problem. So what kind of fence are we looking at? Uh, I mean, a, that's really, a wood I want fence. to make sure that these things are all out of sight, yeah. out of yeah, mind. That, definitely. That they're not accumulating to wear because nobody likes to dispose of tires. Exactly. I think you see the one there on, on Garvin, I think. Heidelbach. Heidelbach, Garvin. yeah. I you think, know, I mean, that's what I think. When I think of a tire shop, yeah. that's what I think and of. I think there's another one up uh, Riverside at yes. Lodge. And, and you, you, you just get that, or Pollock and Lodge, whatever it may Mr. be. Mr. Riviera yes. has not been through the site plan process yet. Right. That would, before, this is my understanding, that before you can actually open, yes. the, your parking area has to be paved. Yes. You have to go through another process yes. with APC that would mm -hmm. determine what was appropriate fencing, sure. you know, what kind of yes. Porsche, you know, his, I think even your landscaping plan, it, all of that is yet to come. Yes. Well, I think I say that but I know the answer you. because, you know, this obviously is not, look, this will never be a residential property. We know that, yes. right? And so the question is, is, you know, are we okay with the tire shop in there? Maybe not particularly, but there's another layer of, of call it bureaucracy that you have to go through before anything like that can open. And I agree with you, Councilman O'Dana. There's been a little bit of a scare due to the fact that there's been some other tire companies, mm -hmm. tire stores around that, that haven't been very reputable. Yes. Well, the, the only good thing that I can say about myself is is that I live in the community where I'm trying to open up the business, and from what the uh, building used to look like to what it looks like now was just a sign and a reassurance to the the, the rest of the community of what it's going to look like. I, I don't want to have a rundown building. That's not how I you know want to present myself at all, and so to have to get this rezone to open the business and then to run it down is that's not what I want to do you know it's it's far from what I want to do I want to be able to uh, have my kids working there uh, give uh, teenagers jobs for the summer that's my goal there and uh, to have it run down is it's not going to happen so and I spoke to all of the neighbors that are within you know the the, the, the abiding of that building there and they were all for it, and uh, now I don't know what's going on. They, you know, got some people stirred up, and so, and I'm pretty sure they're here, and you guys are going to hear from them, so. Mr. Rivera? The other tire shops are not my concern. Um, this is my concern here. My in the area plan meeting, uh, you were very eloquent in terms of telling us what you were going to do with your tires. If I remember correctly, the tires will, uh, during the day, will be out for display to be yes. used, but at night, they're all the, the new tires will go into the building itself for storage. All of the tires. So there will, will not be any new tires on the outside. And if I'm correct here, this, this area in the back, this bin and so forth, that will be the repository for your, for your used tires? No. Where, what would you do with the used tires? They will be as well stored inside. There's racks that I built inside of the shop right now. That 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 building right now can hold 1,700 tires. Well, with with success that I wish you, mm -hmm. um, eventually you're going to need some more space. What are you going to do with the used tires? What are you going? That's what I just said. I can put a container, a, a 54-foot container, in the back of the building. Gotcha. And will that and be I able to store. be, will that yes. be yes, sort of a dumpster type of thing? No. It, 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 with the used tires, if you cut the used tire in three pieces, that's considered trash. So uh, a dumpster would be sitting on the side of a building, fenced in, and a truck would come, yeah. you know, like a regular commercial property. Got it. <clears throat> Got it. Any uh, questions, Mr. please? I, I have a question. If you want to store all these things inside the building, I mean, what about the fire start? Uh, because I know that in the past this brings on a fire safety problem. Mm -hmm. Those tires, man, are when you get them going, they go. Yes. What, I, what, I, what, kind, what, kind of, what kind of mechanism you got to put that back? There's no uh, sprinkler system that is recommended. There's no. I, I contacted the uh, the chief of the fire department, okay. and I wanted to get a. Uh, a fire uh, a plan for the building in regards to the tires and they told me that I just needed to have my uh, smoke alarms and fire extinguishers that was it. So you didn't have any problem by having them too close no, to the ceiling no or whatever sir. else? No sir. 
Okay. And that's an 18 foot ceiling. Yeah, so. No question. I'm sorry. Excuse yes, me. And I butchered your name. I apologize for that. So I think there's a difference, though. You're going to sell new and used tires. Yes, ma'am. So tires that are being discarded, yes. meaning that they no longer qualify as the quality even for used, that's going to be what you cut into the three pieces and, yes. and deposit in your dumpster. Yes, ma'am. So only if your need for stock exceeds what fits inside your building yes. will you um, put in this storage container, but those won't be tires you're throwing away. Those no. will be product that yes. you're going to put out. Yes. Okay. I had one more question. Does this, uh, I know you're buying this on contract. Yes. Okay. Do you, did you have any environmental yes. studies done? Are there tanks no. underground at there's, this location? There's, there's one tank. Okay. And the one tank that is there, I contacted the underground tank management services. His name is Matt Hills. He came out twice and he stuck something down in the tank and the solution that he pulled out in the 80s or 90s, that tank there used to be a, a backfill tank in case of the two tanks that were pulled out. If there was any backfill from the heat, that would uh, seep into that tank. The solution that's in the tank right now does not need to get pulled out. It's a closed out tank. And it's your belief that the tank is not leaking? Well, if the tank was leaking, it wouldn't hold the solution from the 80s. Okay. So do you recognize that um, on when you gain title of this property, you could have significant problems selling it? Yes. Okay. So you're fully aware of, of what you're taking on yes. when you do this? And the EPA. I contacted the EPA as well, and there's no red flags on the property. Uh, there was a couple of red flags from the uh, area zoning planning. I've corrected those. Uh, I'm just trying to. Move what forward. is your time frame for going through the site plan process and actually opening the business? Tomorrow. You mean you're going to, if we rezone, <laughs> you're going to contact the APC, you, you're going to develop a site plan yeah. for them to review? Yeah. Well, I, I spoke to the gentleman that was here. He, he told me that if I don't have no storage outside, I don't need a fence. Okay. So my storage would be later on. Uh, the three entrances to the property that are, is two entrances on Riverside and one on Albert Boulevard. On Albert Boulevard, I don't need to have that paved. I just need to have paved where the cars uh, are leaving the property and, and entering the property uh, uh, for traction purposes. Okay. The whole parking lot does not need to get paved. You have an idea of the cost of doing the paving that you understand that you have to do? Yeah. Well, the whole parking lot does not have no, to be No, no, I understand. But so you've got an idea of what you have to pave yes, to, yes. to produce your site plan. Um, in your presentation to the APC, you talked about a tree plan. Are you, is he, are you going to do some landscaping or plant some things on the property? No, ma'am. Ah, no. I'll look back, but I think that's... <laughs> well, I had a two-year plan. Okay. In two years, I would like to have the whole parking lot paved. I would like to put a fence up. But a tree plan, I don't... I, I took trees down from the property that were rotten. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I swear I read that, but maybe I was... <clears throat> He did. There were some trees on there that you had to take down, right, Mr. Rivera? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 And, and like I said, the, the, the property has, has not had electricity since 2006. And I had to have all of that upgraded to a commercial grade. That's what it looked like when I purchased it. That big tree right there had to come out. It was all rotted. There was no electricity. So, I, I mean, and I stopped. Uh, putting money into the building because, you know, there's a gentleman that's here. You're going to hear from him too, but he was stirring up a lot of commotion in the community and talking negative about how it's going to bring drugs and bugs into the community. And so. Okay, and it does say here, yes, but we have a plan, a tree plan, but maybe that's a typo in transcription. You're talking about the parking lot. You like to either black tar it or do pieces in the front with concrete yes. or black top, but all the potholes, everything has been filled in. You've yes, already done that part. Okay. Yes. 
All right, appreciate your time. Any other Mr. comments? One, just one question. How are you going to operate? Are you going to take title of this thing in your own personal name? Is that what you're going to have it? Or are you going to have it in another type of entity, like an LLC? It's, a, it's going to be an LLC. It's going to be LLC. Yes, okay. Any other questions? Okay. Are there any remonstrators that would like to present their case on this? Please come up. Please join us. <coughs> One at a time. One at a time. Jump in line here. Good evening. My name's Bill Garrett. The counselors, I'm uh, be glad to see you guys tonight. Scott, ain't seen you in a while. Yeah, hey, it has. One of the best attorneys in Evansville. <laughs> that advertising. All right, yeah, right. I like this guy. <laughs> but you might not after this. But at the same time, on this building here and everything else that we got going on here, I've talked to, you know, a few of the neighbors. They're dead against this. They don't need no used tar shop. Well, now I just heard we got new tars coming in, too. At the same time, with me personally, I live at 4216 Quell Hollow, which is on the Fifth Ward, John's. What's that got to do? One guy said to me earlier, you don't have no business there. The hell I don't. You know why? Three homes on Riverside Drive between Bakey and Weinbach, I have actually put in money and helped rebuild them homes. Got one right now that I might even buy half of it back. And it's too close to that if I'm going to, uh, so I'll, I can't hardly invest until I find out. So why would I sit there and wait? I wished I'd had a camera 10 years ago to take a picture between Weinbach and Beggy and show you people what it looked like until it, what it looks like now. There are some nice, they take care of their lawns, they take care of their properties. It, it's amazing. It is totally amazing. But then with something here coming, I don't think that's good. Hell, if everybody thinks that would be such a good idea, hell, move it to the Arts District. Put it there. I mean, if that's the economic development, maybe they'd like that. My part of the neighborhood, I don't want it, and I know my people back here don't want it. Would your people be and do I have do I have anything any more investments? Two two Saturday summer when was I there with you at the park? I was there for an R helping clean up South Park. Why would I do that? I had a son that played baseball there for four years. So, yes, I'm still invested in that. Now, I lived there for 17 years. Would those that are here uh, rep you, that you represent, would, yes. they, they, would they stand, please? Would you guys stand up? I, guess. I represent myself. <laughs> well, you don't have to stand Thanks, up. Randy. <laughs> All right. God, no. Thank you very much. Sir, do you acknowledge that in right now today it looks better than it did? Would I say when yes it? when you painted the building? Yeah. But the thing is from this store here, you've got a block and a half area. You can go buy all the used cars you want. You know, they and they're talking about why are they closing the swimming pool down there? It, the swimming pool is right by that other used store. I mean, I don't know if that's got anything to do with it, but it gets your mind to twirling. What do you think that could be used for? Uh, to me, a beauty shop. Hey, people in that neighborhood still like to look beautiful. <laughs> I mean, you, well, I mean, here's the thing. That would have to be rezoned, too. Well, sure. I, I mean, it would have to be rezoned, and yeah. the thing is, you, you acknowledge it's not, it's not residential. There's no, it's a tank not. under there. It's certainly not going to be that. Right. But this is just a matter of you don't want a tire shop there. Yes, exactly. All right. Yeah. Pizza place, beauty shop, I'm sure they'd be happy with that. I think. I mean, I'm, I'm not speaking for them totally now. I don't know if you want people now. going in and out. Actually, Mr. Rivera, what, what are the hours of operation? Maybe that would help. Nine to five. Okay. Monday through Friday or yes, Saturday. Saturday also? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, folks. It's an honor to be able to talk to you. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Bill Hurd. I'm the pastor of the Eastside Church of God. 
that's just down the corner on one block uh, south of this piece of property. Uh, I've been there for 35 years, and I've seen about everything happen to this building that can happen to it. I've seen it whenever the uh, people that originally had it, whenever I first came in, the gas station, as has been stated. And I know that the young boy that uh, was raised in the house next to it attends my church. I was here to speak at the area plan the last time that it was tried to be turned into a residential uh, thing or a piece of property behind it. And we spoke against that because we had some real concerns then. I do want to say to Mr. Riviera that uh, you've done a good job of making it look better. It does look much better, and we appreciate that. Uh, we're not here to talk against an individual. Uh, I'm here to talk about my property, and I'm here to represent about 40 people that come to my church. We're deeply concerned about our area. Uh, in the last, within the last um, three months, if you read the police reports, and I'm not uh, saying anything about this gentleman, I'm talking about our area and what is happening. Uh, the house next to it was busted as a meth home. The house across the street was also busted as a meth home. The uh, piece of property that is a rental home, caddy corner to my, or just across from my parking lot at my church, uh, we have had severe trouble with. As a matter of fact, a member of the police department contacted me and uh, said, uh, Reverend, he said, those people are dangerous people that live there. And uh, I know that for a fact because I've, we've had gunfire. Um, just, just as a couple of months ago, uh, the gentleman come to me that lived there and said, Reverend, I need help. I said, what's the matter? He said, uh, well, I'm a felon and I can't own a gun. But I got friends that are shooting up my property. And I don't know what to do. And I said, well, the only thing I can tell you is uh, get saved, give your heart to Jesus, and stop running around those friends, and they'll stop shooting up your house. And, uh, but what I'm saying is that uh, the, the folks that are moving into these pieces of property uh, have not done anything to help us. We're trying to uh, upgrade everything that we possibly can. And I'm just saying that we're having a lot of things happen that are that is changing the face of my community where I live. And like I said, it's not against anybody because I think everybody's, they're probably pretty good folks. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate what he's done. My concern is, is that uh, whenever a tire shop comes into our area, now down on Lodge and Riverside, we have one down there and it has not enhanced that area at all. Over the years, it continually, continues to degrade and get worse. My concern is that we already have um, we already have a statement from F.C. Tucker that will be presented in a little bit by another gentleman that states that when this piece of property uh, becomes a tire uh, shop, that my home that is right next to my church, I'm going it's going to go down in value. They've already made that statement to us. I'm concerned about that. I'm also concerned that anything that would be that would um, lessen uh, the appeal for people to come to my end of town to attend a worship service, I'm concerned about that. As I said, it does look better than it did, and I thank the Lord for that. Uh, but at the same time, it's a tire shop. And um, I, I want to say that I am for people making a living. I admire anybody who uh, gets out and, and, and busts their behind to make a dollar, try to make it work, and I admire that very much in anyone. Uh, I'm just saying that this would not enhance my property. Uh, it would also be a, a deterrent, I think, to people coming to my end of town. Uh, it just don't look, it doesn't look, um, let me just say it like this. I think it would serve better as a storage unit or something of that nature. I'm not against somebody going into business, but this type of business is going to hurt my property values. I think it's going to be a deterrent. Uh, still as a tire shop to uh, people attending my church. I have about 40 folks uh, that would be that are against this, that does not want that to happen. And um, so the only thing I know to say is that I'm here to speak for my church and what I think it will do to my area. We already have proof it's going to hurt our uh, the price of my property. And I'm trying to upgrade everything I possibly can. And we're trying, and, and as already been mentioned, a lot of money has gone into our area in just the last little bit. Homes are being, uh, old homes being tore down, new homes being built. They're close to me. Uh, people have done a lot of renovation to a lot of these homes right here close by. 
Um, and so the only thing, now I have never spoken uh, to this gentleman before. Now he's never approached me about this. Um, the only thing I can say is that I would, I sure don't want to see a tire shop come into this area. Uh, I don't know what else to say except um, I thank you for your time and appreciate the opportunity to be heard. Thank and you. I hope that you will please decide in our favor. Thank you. Thank sir. you. You're next, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Randy Kemp. I live at 2227 East Riverside Drive. Uh, I was at the last council meeting and there were eight questions that were unanswered for me there. And I'm going to ask you those same questions here. We're live on television. And I think as a taxpayer of the city of Evansville and you representing me, that those questions should be answered. Uh, first, I'd like to approach Ms. Mosby and Jonathan Weaver with a question. Uh, yeah, I'll let him pass that out. And this is just something for me as a taxpayer. Does know. this have to do with this rezoning? Yes, it does. Okay. Yes, it does. You both privately work for FC Tucker, right? Jonathan, you do too, right? Right. You, that's a great company. Probably one of the best in the city of Evansville. I would think so. Yes, and I, and I do too. So you would take an appraiser that's with your company. You would hold them in high regard. Not an appraiser. We don't have appraisers at our company. You have a woman named Miss Sandra Schaefer. Do you yes. know the name? Yes. yes. And do she's you a, she's respect a, her opinion? I, I do respect her opinion, but she does not live in this area. Okay, but you respect her opinion. I, 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 Sandy's a good friend of mine. Yes, and she works for FC Tucker. Yes, she does. Yes, Jonathan. Yes. I know of Sandy. Yeah, and you respect her as a colleague and someone you work with. I would do a cross sell with her. Okay, that's that's all. I want to read something from her. And I've read that, so please Okay, yes, but I want to read that again to the public because yes. that's somebody you respect and that you admire, and that's what I thought, too. When she quoted uh, per request, she said, I made a visual inspection of your neighborhood. In particular, the corner lot that is currently requesting a rezoning from R1 to C4 at 2141 East Riverside. The neighborhood is 99% residential with only a service station a block away to the east and nothing to the west for approximately six blocks. My professional opinion, which eight people didn't respect FC Tucker and MB at the last meeting, they threw this out. We're going to get, as we go farther on, to, to allow this property to be zoned commercial for a used tire business would devalue the neighborhood. Would you agree with that? You don't agree with your colleague? Uh, sir, I, sir, Mr. Sir? Mr. Kemp, I, uh, Thank you. If I may, <clears throat> you're certainly welcome to give a presentation. It's not appropriate to ask council members questions. If they have questions of you, they'll ask you, but you shouldn't ask council members questions. We're, we're not in a court of law. You're not a lawyer. If you would, just give your presentation, and they'll consider your presentation. Thank you. Mr. Danks, can I re approach you in that? Uh, not we're not really, in, go ahead. We're not in a court of law, sir, but this is getting to my point. I have to present this to get to a point for everyone here on the city council. Well, I, I know it's difficult to understand, but actually you're making your point without okay. asking council members to verify somebody's reputation or their accuracy, that type of thing. You can speak to that. Okay. Uh, these council members, are, they're, they're not going to be put in that situation. All right. Okay, so don't ask give, the council give members. Give your presentation. For, okay. And if a council member wants you to somehow verify that this person's qualified, or, they'll ask you that question. All okay. Right? But you shouldn't try to verify something through another council member. Well, uh, sir, I, I just think you need to read the letter. Okay, yeah, let's read, read the letter, letter and we'll finish yeah. that. My professional opinion would be to allow this property to be zoned commercial for used tar business would devalue the neighborhood. Point in reference would be the intersection at Riverside and Pollock where there is no, where there is a used tar business with many junk cars sitting around. Putting this type of business in would be a disservice to all the many families trying to maintain their homes. It could, it could, if you could be further service, please let me know. Would you, everyone, would you agree with that? We're not, that's not the <laughs> okay. question whether we agree with us. Okay. 
I guess. Uh, what else would you like to present, sir? Yeah, my first point is is that this is a qualified professional saying that putting a used tire business in that area will devalue the property that's 99% residential. Okay. All right, Doc. And okay. seven more points? Yeah. I uh, have a, a couple more, and these are things I want answered. Uh, now, I can't ask questions to the board member, even if they hold another board in someplace else, Scott. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't follow your question. Okay, uh, Missy and Jonathan, and this is uh, to get to a point mm -hmm. on the Eastview Neighborhood Association. Can I ask them because they are on that association, which I'm a part of? I you think know, you, I, it, really, your purpose is to give a presentation, okay. not, not to uh, ask okay. questions of council members. So if you would, I, and for whatever it's worth, I, I think you score more points by just moving forward, giving your presentation. You read the letter, okay. good stuff. Good. Um, but if you would just stick to your presentation, don't try to draw council members into your presentation. Well, just, I want for, you know, I'd like to ask a question, you know, to get an answer, but I understand, okay, let's go, we'll move on. But at the East View, East View Neighborhood Association minutes on March 18, 2015, uh, Second Ward City Council Representative, Ms. Mosby, talked on current issues facing the city and the ward. Also, the Van Park cleanup was discussed. City Council Representative John Weaver was also in attendance. Okay. Guest speaker, uh, one of the chairpersons of the Streets Alive program gave us some information on the upcoming event, which I, I like that program, by the way. Mr. Rivera spoke on the gas station on Riverside that he purchased and the plans he had to renovate it as a tire shop. Now, the reason why I bring this up, there was a vote taken, which a letter was sent to you saying that they okayed the vote. Well, the secretary, his name is Jim Grace, he was at that meeting when I notified him to give me who voted, how many were there, he's the recording secretary. I couldn't find the paperwork, but we had signatures or petitions lined out with 109 individuals, and I'm gonna to get to a point on this as we work around this. So we had 109 signatures. One of the signatures, which I don't know if you'd like to read this, Scott, since you're a lawyer, but is James Grace, the recording secretary that sat at this meeting, and let me read what he signed, okay, along with 108 individuals that weren't even read at that last meeting. In other words, these 108 taxpayers were thrown to the side. Now, we're going to get to why they didn't appear. We're going to come to that. We, the residents of the neighborhood, have put forth considerable effort to improve the overall appearance of this community. Zoning this property for commercial business will cause adverse effects to the much improved neighborhood. Rezoning would decrease property value and increase traffic to our residential area. This change would create an unsafe environment for our young children. We request that you please reject this petition zone. Now, if you'll look down on the name, that's James Grace's name with phone number that's set on this council. Now, the next question is, and probably you would have on your mind, is why those 109 people aren't here. Anybody? Yes? Good question. Just if you would, Play just, on, just tell the Yeah, just say. Uh, <laughs> I want to get a nod that you're alive. You know you're alive. Sir, 109. Well, please make your presentation. Mr. Kemp, Mr. Kemp, if I may, too, just so you know, I, I think the council is being extremely courteous. Typically, okay. Typically, they limit these presentations to three minutes. Okay. Three minutes? Three minutes for the total presentation. Okay. You've been up there for about 15. Just so you know, 15? you want to kind of cut it short, get to the point, cut okay. it short. Well, <clears throat> the last meeting, Mr. Adams Doc, you were there, and the question was why those 109 participants weren't there. You know, and the thing that, and I'm going to have to ask another question. Don't throw me out, but another question. But I want to ask you, why didn't you notify those 109 by phone? Why didn't you call? There's a, there's a notice okay. process okay. And, and telephone calls isn't part of it. But you really need to go if you want All to right. finish your presentation. You need to finish it. All, All right. right. Well, I can't ask another question. The okay. Area, the area plan. The individuals not. in that neighborhood, in that neighborhood, are elderly. They own their properties, by the way. They don't lease or rent them. They're on fixed incomes. And there was a Facebook post that uh, I use Facebook. I'm, I'm friends with quite a few of you on Facebook, but on the signature post, they were very scared of this individual. And here's the picture of this individual's Facebook post. You can look it up right now. If it's, you in, like. it's in the report, yeah. sir. Yes. So that's the reason why 109 
elderly, fixed income, that have lived in that area for a long time were very scared to be present. They wanted somebody to speak for them. Time That's out. why I'm here. Now, yeah, time out. Time go ahead. out. These people are threatened by a man who happens to be shooting out a shooting range? Good good point, Doctor. Can I answer that? If you would. Yeah, now, the pre -pre Doc Adams, on your Facebook, if you have one, on your signature post, is every post like this? Well, it's not a matter for well, what my Well, hold on, says. hold on a minute. It is his hold constitutional right, and amongst many. Everybody has a right to post pictures. But when you have the elder, then they look at somebody drawing a gun. Is your Facebook picture the first Sir, thing you see? Sir, he's out of target range. Don't be right. silly here. Well, I'm just saying this is the reason they were intimidated. Now, everybody has a right to own a gun, but this is every picture and every post that gun is present. It's not like just a picture on his Facebook site. So he proved he liked guns. Okay. Yeah, I like them too. Yeah, okay. So do I. Okay. <laughs> and I think a petition is a fine yeah. method of, of submitting people. We don't really expect every single person. We get it that people have lives. And also, your presentation, what you've submitted in this file, has been given to the clerk and becomes part of the record. So Good. everything that you've submitted, and just to correct the record, no one appeared here before. You're referring no, to an about area, planning area planning commission, commission meeting. Yeah. And those minutes are part of this and as well. And those minutes so. are kept, but we don't have anything to do with the notice process that goes out to affected residents, nor whether they appear. And of course, we obviously weren't, most of us were not there. I believe Dr. Adams is our member. That, that serves on that board. Yes, but and there was great discussion at that time. Yeah, no, and yeah. when I've read those minutes, so I can, I can see that. But everything you've presented goes into the record. Good. Uh, so you don't also have to read it unless you want to. Okay. So let me understand this. So if I ever come here again, I can't ask you guys any questions. You, you can. The nature you can, of the but it's okay. it, it wasn't. It, it's not appropriate. You're, you're really uh, consuming all the council's time. Did you have some other point? And I, I, honestly, I'm not trying to. I'm no, really Scott, trying to help yeah. you out. Yeah, your, yeah, Scott. Your point is why? Why are you against it? And and you're you're Perfectly. pointing out you're against you're it. You're pointing out. Here's the points. One, we have 109 signatures. We have a drop in property value in that area. Another question: Would you want to use tar place in your neighborhood? That's rhetorical. So that's a, and, uh, and, and that's fine. And that's, and that's a legitimate question as a taxpayer. Matter of fact, eight people on the area planning board wouldn't answer me that. They wouldn't give me a simple yes or no. Mr. So, Mr. Uh, Riviera said you're not going to know this is a tire place after hours. They're going to be stored in the building. True. Simple question. Okay. Would you want to get what are, what are the points you want to make, sir? That's, that's he's, he's answering a question. Any questions? He's answering a question. So. I just want to address something that you said. Yes, I do attend Eastview Neighborhood Association mm -hmm. because I think it's it's good for me to go to my neighborhood associations. Yeah. I attend probably eight or nine other ones as well. But I, I, Jonathan Weaver does as well because that's how we get to know the people in our neighborhood. But I did not vote on that that evening. Wow. I, I did not okay. take a vote on that. See, and neither did Councilman Weaver. And you know, Miss, so, I didn't know that. I mean, that. you were you were putting something out there to try to make it look like. So I just want to clear that up. That yes, I go to neighborhood meetings. I proudly attend them. I think that's a good way for me to get to know my constituents. But what you're trying to say, you were trying to tarnish my reputation and say I voted mm -hmm. on something. I did not. No, no, no. Let me uh, let me answer that, please. Let me answer that, please. Can I answer that, Scott? There's a letter in there that says a vote was taken, a letter was sent to you by the Eastwood Neighbor Eastview Neighborhood Association that they approve this. Yeah, members of the association. I'm a right. member. So you, I'm a guest yeah, and I couldn't get who voted, and I didn't say that you voted. I said you that were you were alluding present. alluding to that. Yeah, but you were present. You were present at that meeting. So I proudly attend sir. my neighborhood association. So do I. Yes, and I, I And I respect that. But you attended that meeting that day, you and Jonathan both. I attend probably 95% of those okay. meetings. But you didn't vote. That was six months ago. I don't remember what it, Connie told me on okay. Saturday. Sir, so. yeah. we're going to have to slow this down. <laughs> OK. Are you done? Yeah, th uh, that answer, you know, I, I got a lot of questions answered. Uh, sorry you. about that. No, yeah. don't be sorry. Yeah, I love to, love to get my tax dollar. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, is there anyone else that would like to speak? M Mr. Mosby was here, but I think he. Well, you were in line, but I'm, I'm here. I'm here um, to support the rezoning. I own the property right behind, just right behind um, 
2141. I own um, 20, 2515 South Avar Boulevard. And, and um, the pastor that spoke, if you learn who Jose was, you would understand that he's a good person. This, this, is, this is beyond just a tire shop. This young, this young man is trying to, trying to build something for his family. And, and as far as the tires goes, on a cold winter morning when you don't have a flat tire, everybody looking for a, cold, a, a tire shop. You know, it's, it's beyond, it, and, and, it's, and it's, it's good money in it. It's good money in it. That's why, that's why you see all the tires in the back of different places. But he's not, he's not going to do everything he's done, clean this place up. I was there before him. He, I got there. I got there, and he, and, and he came over and, to introduce himself, and he had cut my grass. I, did, I didn't know who the guy was. Sir. And, and he, could you state your name and where you live? Oh, my name yeah. is my name is Adrian Joyner. Yeah, uh, 2515 South Alvar Alva okay. Boulevard. It's for, it's for the record. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's okay. I thought I was saying something wrong. <laughs> Since the last guy. Whoa. <laughs> but anyway, the the guy that passed out the 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 folders. You know, me and me and Jose was sitting out this morning talking about this moment. And these guys, they take it to a whole nother level. You know, they ride by 20 miles per hour. You know, pointing fingers, you know, it, it gets personal, and and it shouldn't go to that level. It makes you under, it makes you wonder: is it is it is it really about tars, or or is it, you know, has it got a problem with who coming into the community? Because oh, Jose is a good guy, but he he affiliated say he, he he's affiliated with me, and I'm the, and I'm the only person right behind right behind the shop, you know, and and. You 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 wonder you wonder what's 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 the real story here, but but I'm I'm just here to support him, and I hope that he do, that that y'all consider Ms. Mosey, because if 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 it if it wasn't for your early on support, he probably wouldn't have went as far as he did with the building, because the building was in horrible shape. Y'all see how the building looked, and and the trees the tree you couldn't see my property because of the trees that grew up on his. But but now everything everything looks good and I, and I hope that um, y'all um, really look beyond all the riffraff that these people are throwing at him because if you if you do a little history there was another guy that got in this building a few years back by the name of George Madison and he was pushed out hor horribly he was taking care of his family and he got pushed out by these same people. You, you, you want to, you, you know, you look a little further, look at the trend here. What, what's, what's the problem? You know? And if they, <laughs> if they, if they give Jose the rezoning, you never know. With a C4 zoning, you might can get a piece of shop in the community. He got enough property there for a piece of shop if you want to put one on the side of it. You know? I just want to let y'all know that I'm supporting it. Thank, well, thank you, you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Name and address, sir? Don Mosley. 1730 Greencastle. What I hear, I heard you all talking about the ballpark. I want to tell you one thing. I coached at ballpark 40 years, and this and she's talking about my cranes. I mean, my brother-in-law used to live right next to where this bail is been. I know all about it, and I tell you his name. You can check it, Roscoe Wilson. He sold the house to when he moved in Annapolis. They don't think I'm in my neighborhood. It's my neighborhood, because I used to go out there and babysit for them and everything. In the ballpark, they told my dad I helped build that ballpark, and they can't say this and that. I I take play with kids all the time. And I still coach a ball team and a swim team. Mr. Mosby. Yeah, but yeah, they bought the ballpark up. Could you stick to the uh, subject we've got here on 2141 East Riverside? Huh? We're not talking about the ballpark, sir. Well, I am talking about, I know, they said I don't know about that neighborhood. My brother-in-law used to live right, right next to it. I didn't hear anybody say that you didn't know about the neighborhood. Well, she said, I, just you, want to, I ain't saying no names. I just, I'm just want to hear your views on the Riverside property. It shouldn't be zoned. Because it's a yeah, spot zone to start with now. And you all didn't know about spot zone. And she's talking about the neighborhood association. I belong to the neighborhood association. I go down there, there's four or five people, so and that's the way it works. 
Okay. See you now. See you on target with me. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other uh, comments or reverse? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. Name and address, sir? Harold Williams. I live at 2233 East Riverside Drive, and I just want to, I won't take just a few seconds every time. I'm not pleased with a, the tar shop. If you want three minutes, you got it, sir. Well, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, I'd be just not not pleased with the tire shack, you know, in that area. I think it'll devaluate the property and cause a lot more, well, you know, more traffic on the road out there. I mean, there's a little kid, a lot of little kids live up and down through there too. There is a lot of kids, so that's about it. I just Thank hope you, that sir. you vote in our favor and you know don't rezone. Mr. Rivera, get Thank you. Mr. Smart Street. Could, Mr. Rivera, get the talk back. Could I could I make one comment too? Sure. Please. You know. This has been a vacant property for quite some time, which does cause issues and problems in a neighborhood. Um, you know, to get a business back in there and get some lighting and some, some people there, it, you know, I'm hoping that it helps deter some things in that area. Um, and what some of the remonstrators, I mean, I understand you may not be happy with what's going in there, but our question here is, should this be a commercial piece of property? And it's been a commercial piece of property since day one. Okay. Yes. I, I just want to say something. You know, everything that's going on right now is, is overwhelming. It really is, you know. And I, I just want to say something for the record real quick. March 9th, I had the opportunity to rezone or, or submit the paperwork for this piece of property. March 9th. I held back that application to meet all of the, the neighborhood and, and, and to get familiar with the residents in the neighborhood. I cleaned up the property. I'd made some changes to the property. Then I submitted my application. Not once has nobody come to me voicing their concerns. The pastor, I met you once. You came getting firewood, right? <clears throat> Not once did you voice any concern to me about what I was going to do there or what was going to be put there or nothing. If people from your church are saying that they don't want to see a tire shop there and that that's going to hurt people from going to church, that's bad. Your church is doing bad. Because I travel all the way up to Lynch Road and Burkhart to go to church every sure. Sunday. So I just want to clear that. Please I, make your comments to us. I just want to clear that up, you know. Okay. And if an abandoned building is what you guys want to see there, I would put it back that way if you don't rezone it. I'll pay for the building and put it exactly back the way it was. And then you'll have traffic in that parking lot. You'll have meth dealers selling drugs out of that parking lot. You'll have more shootings there because it's empty. It's no light. And that's bad. If you guys want that in your community, I could, I'll be gladly to put it back that way. But that's not what I want to do. I want to, if you get an appraiser now for your properties, it's probably went up since I did what I did to my building. Okay. So, ask Tucker that. <coughs> Can I have a question for you, Mr. Rivera? Yes, ma'am. Um, you obviously started working on this property before you submitted it, and I can tell from your contract that you pay somewhere in the neighborhood of about $8,000 so far yep. on the purchase of the property. It's, it's been a little bit more. It's at 12000 Is that That's what I was getting at. Is that your, what you've paid for the property? No, the building is 25000 No, I know, but you're paying 416 Dollars a month, five thousand dollars down. I did yep. some quick math. Yeah. Have you and how much have you invested into the? Personally, in I got about ten grand personally invested in the building. That's aside from the twelve thousand. Okay. And so you've paid twelve. You've you've um, paid twelve on the twenty-five yes. purchase price. Yes. Yes. And what will you do with the property it's if you're not able to open it as a tire shop? Well, I don't know because I, I, I got all of the equipment already purchased for a tire shop. I got lifts in there. I got tire changing machines. I got air compressors. It's a garage. It's an automotive building. If 
if it can't be serviced for automotive services, then I don't know what the building could be. I mean, it's all one. I can't have nobody living there with two big garage doors. Right. So, I mean, if, if the community doesn't want a tire shop there, that's sad because if your tire get flat and then you got to drive all the way down there and I'm right across the street from you, that's bad. It looks you like know? from the aerial pictures, there's a, some sort of mechanic shop behind it. I see a lot of school buses, it looks like, from the aerial well, shop. Well, that's, that's in the back of uh, right. Alvard, yes. So there's the side, other yes. commercial stuff happening. Yes, there is. Right there. Yes, and that big white building, uh, if you drop back just a little bit down, that's a C2 building on a residential property. Well, I think there's a C2 you designation know, and, on it. So, And, and to be so. honest, if someone was offended by my picture on Facebook, <laughs> that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But the lady, her name is Miss Evelyn. She's 92 years old. She lives uh, two houses over from my tire shop right there. That's her house, actually. That's Miss Evelyn's house. Um, she had some uh, a, a wall on her piece of property that was like uh, uh, chipping on the paint. I got guys to paint her house. I found her people to paint her house. And her and I, we talk. I mean, I'm actually remodeling the house right next door to the shop. So it's, it's. Well, I think you're the, I, I think you're the, I don't, uh, don't use the word victim, but you're, the, the problem here is the way people view tire shops around the city, yes. as I indicated earlier. Yes. And many of them, not yours necessarily, but yeah. many of them are not, are the, they're eyesores. Yeah. And, you, and so people want some assurances from us and from you on why yours is going to be any different. Yeah. And of course, you're just giving your word and what you've done to the property in the last six months. Um, but clearly it can't be anything but some sort of light commercial kind of thing because it was a gas station and the environmentals won't allow for residential to be there. Yeah. So uh, the question for us is, do we allow for it to be a tire <coughs> shop? We do have an opportunity to do that. Yeah. I know that's, that's a debate amongst council members on whether or not when we do rezoning, are we just rezoning because it's the highest and best use or do, can we control yeah. what goes in there? We had that debate with the property there at the church at Fielding and, and the Lloyd too. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think I appreciate your presentation and everybody else's concerns because I know they're they're very real. Um, but it also in looking at that appraiser's report, it also says the point of reference was that tire shop down at Riverside and, and Lodge, which is not his property either. Mm -hmm. And well, so that's, that. that I mean, I, I think that's a distinguishing factor here when we're talking about property values across the neighborhood. Yeah. So. Well, well, to answer that, to, uh, as far as like the tire shop that's on Lodge, that tire shop that's on Lodge, the, uh, uh, the guy who runs the tire shop, I, I don't know his name. That's not his land. He does not own that piece of property. He owns the business. He's been there 15 plus years. The lady that owns it, she doesn't want to sell it because he's there, he's paying that money. So he does not want to invest back into that building to where as though I'm going to become the landowner of this property so I have the opportunity to invest back into my business. He doesn't have that privilege. And a lot of tire shops that are in town don't have that, you know, that, that land ownership to invest back into the business so that it will increase the value of the property. I think that's an distinction. So... That's why those tire shacks look like the way they do. I guess I have one question. You spent $10,000 on equipment, you said? Yes, yes ma'am. Did you not know that you had to have it rezoned? Yes, I did. I did. I'm, I'm going out at it on faith here. Uh, and, and, and my faith tells me that I, when I look at that building, it's a commercial building. If, if the community has a problem with that building being there, somebody should have bought it and knocked it down. It's a commercial building, and, and it's a garage. It's automotive services. And so that's, that's the only thing I can say about okay. that. Okay. Does the use and development uh, agreement require that the tires be stored inside when the shop is closed? Yes, ma'am. Or a container outside, but in order for me to put the container outside, I would have to fence it in. 
during the daytime of business operation, I could have tires outside, but when the doors close, I would, if, or if it's raining, if it's raining, I would have to have something covering the tires that are outside so they don't accumulate water inside and then you get mosquitoes. Do you currently own a business somewhere else in the city? Yes. What do you do now? Well, I do, I do construction work right now. Okay. And I'm also invested into this community. I own a home on Frizzy. Okay. And if you guys looked at that, that property is paid in full for. Okay. That's a $75,000 uh, home right there. That's paid in full, no mortgage, nothing. Have you had any complaints against your current business? No. Building commission, any code violations? No, no, no. What about your home? No. Thank you. Okay. We've a couple quick, quick just We've been at this for a while. Uh, just two real quick ones. Um, how long was this building vacant? Do you know, sir? If I'm not mistaken, electricity was off since 2006. Okay. So from there was a generator that was inside the building. Whoever was operating out of there was using a generator. So if I'm not mistaken, it's been 10 years plus. So has has this thing been in the automotive? business since it was built in 1959? Yes. And do you know when that was a gas station from, I know it was a gas station for 31 or 32 years, some of you people from the neighborhood may know, did it sell tires? No. 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 Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. Um, is there anyone else who wants to speak and add something new to the discussion? New to the discussion? Jimmy Kemp, live at 2213 East Riverside Drive. Go. Oh. I own three pieces of property there, close to that station. My nephew owns two. We own five when we own them. We don't rent them or nothing. Riviera said that Miss Evans, he did some work for her. She signed that petition. She don't want it there either. Did you guys look at her name on there? She signed the petition. She don't want the tar place there. Bonnie Williams, right across the street, signed it. She don't want it there. The house to the right of Bonnie Williams, a bank repoed that. The house over to the right, it's a rent house. He rents that house. So, no, I own three pieces. My nephew owns two. Got it. And I don't want no tar shop. I don't want his own C4. I appreciate your time. Got it. Okay. Um, and no more comments, I guess, from us. We've, we've heard from the crowd. Um, is there a motion to adopt um, R 2015 19? I need a second. Okay, thank you. I have, <coughs> I have, a, mo I have a, a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Councilman McGinn? No. Councilwoman Mosby? Aye. Councilwoman Brinkoff Riley? This is a toughie. Uh, it's absolutely uh, hard to say. I mean, I'm not a, uh, I don't put a ton of stock in petitions and I'm not super fearful of remonstrators because sometimes we have to make decisions that are unpopular uh, and looking at, at a larger picture. I mean, this is either going to sit vacant um, indefinitely and, and the city doesn't have a great policy or plan in place for demolition of commercial buildings and since there's tanks in the ground, the odds are that if the current owner were to abandon the property, it would just cycle through the auction process with nobody picking it up uh, because of the liability and ultimately it would end up in the hands of the city uh, to take care of, board up, mow, um, and we, there are infinite 
not infinite, but there's a lot of examples uh, of abandoned commercial properties that uh, Miller plating that property that cycle through the auction process because the county won't take possession of them and nobody's dumb enough to buy them. Uh, and that's really what this property faces. And, and so you've got the, the, and I don't even, the cliche about sort of the devil in the, the devil you know and the devil you don't. Uh, and I think that the, uh, the one you know uh, seems to be an upstanding uh, man that's proven his willingness to invest his time and money in the business. My problem with the tire shops in my ward are that the tires sit out and they cause all kinds of problems. Uh, they're ugly, there's bugs, and you've got a use and development agreement that requires that those stay inside. And as unpopular as it may seem in the short term, I think it's the best thing in the long run. I vote aye. Councilwoman Robinson. This Councilwoman Brickerhoff Riley said this is a very tough one. I mean, I don't want to stop anyone from being an entrepreneur, but then I'm also thinking, would I want tires in my neighborhood? You know, so it really is a tough one. I think the only thing that saves it is the fact that he's going to put the tires in the building after 5 o'clock. I hope I'm doing what's right, but I'm doing what I think is right, and I vote aye. Councilman Friend. <clears throat> Obviously, <clears throat> what I do for a living, I always like to promote uh, businesses as much as we can. It, um, I guess looking at this, what I noticed that there seem to be other other commercial pieces of property around that. I think, I think Dan, did you not point those out to me, I believe? Yeah, on, on the on the screen, and I can I have I can be very sentimental about uh, about people about the values of the homes. Uh, I mean, and what Stephanie made a comment about this probably would cycle through. Uh, Miller Plating is a good example of all this. Boy, I tell you, and uh, only I can imagine that that corner or whatever that is would would just deteriorate. But uh, with that, I'll I'll have to go along with the with an eye on this. Councilman Lindsay? Hold on a second. That is an eye? Aye, aye, aye yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I feel for Mr. Rivera, but I also feel for the people that have to live in that neighborhood. You know, and uh, I agree that he's, and I agree with him on a lot of points that if someone was really concerned about that building, they should have bought it. I agree with that. But I also agree that I, you know, these people <clears throat> live in this neighborhood for years. I'm not questioning his, you know, uh, him in any way. I feel for him as far as a businessman, but uh, you know I've always got to side with the uh, with the people living in those neighborhoods. So I vote no. Councilman O'Daniel. Well, it's 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 clearly a commercial building. The question is whether or not we should um, get into the the business of determining what exactly should go in there and what should not. You know, if it closed in 1990 as a gas station. No other commercial development has really gone in there. You know, we, we can fantasize about a pizza place or a hair styling salon, but the reality is, is nothing's gone in there that has made a dime. We've got a gentleman who, uh, from his word, that's all we have to go on, um, and, and I guess his actions over the last six months in, in making that building look better on a prayer um, has seemed to indicate with his investment that he'll he'll try to make this work and, and will do what he can with the neighborhood and invest it for his children apparently as well. Um, you know, uh, I, I think we're clouded by the fact that other tire shops have, have not necessarily lived up to their end of the bargain, uh, but if the use and development commitment uh, mandates that the tires are put away, are stored out of sight, that will go a long way towards um, making this venture um, worthwhile. As far as the property values, I understand that the, the point of reference is, is another tire shop that isn't necessarily good. I also think that, you know, the recitation that there were meth houses uh, in the immediate area probably does more to devalue the neighborhood than a lone tire shop or a vacant building that has sat empty for 25 years. So, um, you know, I, I've been pretty consistent about promoting development. 
where it makes sense and where the use really has not changed significantly. I think Mr. Rivera has at least demonstrated um, that he's willing to invest his own money into it, not just renting. Uh, he's going to own this. Uh, obviously, I think even the remonstrators have said it looks a lot better than it used to. Um, and I think that rather than operate on fear, we ought to operate on faith. And I think that uh, he's given his word, and so for that reason, I'll vote for the rezoning, so I vote aye. Councilman Weaver? Aye. Councilman Adams? Again, this is a gray area. Um, I sort of like history. Um, this has been a commercial site for a long time, but it's been a failed commercial site. Um, I know the mortality of small businesses, what is it, 90% over two years? Unfortunately, um, I think that the people who actually live in the area pretty much don't want that, so I vote no. Uh, there being six I's and three O's, Ordinance R 2015-19 is hereby declared adopted. Regular agenda, third reading of zoning ordinances, Ordinance R 2015-20, an ordinance to rezone certain real estate in the city of Evansville, state of Indiana, more commonly known as 7501 Telephone Road, Petitioner Mob, LLC. Who wants to discuss this? Ah, here we go. Welcome. Thank you for being patient. Yeah. Thank you for being patient. I move for approval. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I, I thought I'd give it a shot. Uh, well timed, I might add. <laughs> Good afternoon, members of the City Council. May I go ahead and proceed? Please. Thank you. For the record, my name is Maria Bulkley. I'm an attorney with Condes Donovan and Con Law Firm at 501 Main Street. Uh, with me this afternoon is developer Bruce Biggerstaff of MOB LLC. Also with me is surveyor Scott Beadle. And we're here this afternoon requesting a down zoning from C4 with the use and development commitment to R1. I did hand out packets. Um, you probably already had them in your packet, but to make it easy, I handed those out. There's a color map inside so you can see where this property is located. This um, property is a 36-acre site, and it's located on the south side of Telephone Road near the intersection of Telephone and Diego, and it's sandwiched in between Old ben Boonville Highway and Morgan Avenue. Uh, we are seeking to downzone this property in order to put in a residential development, which would be comprised of single-family dwellings. Um, Across the road, across Telephone Road to the north of this site, there is another residential development. It's called Sentara Ridge, and that development is also uh, a mis one of Mr. Biggerstaff's developments, and this would be a similar development if any of you are familiar with that. Um, in this area, there are also other residential developments, and this use is consistent with the comprehensive future plan. I'd like to add on July 6, we held a meeting with neighbors. Uh, we held that at Mr. Biggerstaff's office. We had an excellent turnout for that meeting. We were able to answer questions the neighbors had concerning the development, and we did not have any objections or negative feedback. In fact, several of the neighbors were happy to have the down zoning and excited about the prospect of more residential in the area. Uh, we request that uh, you grant this petition to down zone from C4 with the use and development to R1, and we did receive um, all of the favorable votes from Area Plan Commission, no, no negative votes. If you have questions for us, we'll be happy to answer those. Any questions from Council? Any remonstrators or comments from the crowd? Um, is there a motion to adopt R-2015-20? So moved. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Councilman McGinn. Uh, Maria, I love it when people build homes within the city limits. Hopefully we can increase our population. Plus, I've never had a problem with a down zoning to R-1. I Thank vote you. aye. Councilwoman Mosby. I think it's a great project. I'm looking forward to seeing it develop. I vote aye. Thank you. Councilwoman Brinkoff Riley. Councilwoman Robinson. Aye. Councilman Friends. Aye. Councilman Lindsay. Aye. Councilman O'Daniel. Aye. Councilman Weaver. Aye. Councilman Adams. Uh, this sailed through area plan, and it really is a good thing. I vote aye. Therefore, I believe we're eight ayes and zero in phase. Okay. And therefore, 2015-20 is hereby declared adopted. Thank you. Thank you for being with us.
Ordinance R 2015-21, an ordinance to rezone certain real estate in the city of Evansville, state of Indiana, more commonly known as 211, 213, 217, 221, 223, and 225 Wagner. Petitioner Memorial Development, Memorial Community Development Corporation. Okay, who is going to talk to us today about this piece of legislation? Ah, Reverend. Join us, please. Good evening. I'm Adrian Brooks with Memorial Community Development Corporation. Uh, we have before you a, um, a request to resign, to rezone, not resign, I'm not ready to do that yet, <laughs> but to rezone these properties for our continuing development of housing in the center city uh, that will continue to add population to our city as well. See, I think this is a good example of how land banking can work, right? Because you've got continuous properties and then you're going to develop it consistent with everything else, right? Taking a while to get a, these properties together? It's, uh, well, we've worked, we work very well with uh, the city. And uh, so for us, it has been as uh, pleasant of an experience as it could be in trying to do these prop these projects but uh, we continue to make progress and uh, people continue to show us that there is a, a need uh, as we supply so as we build people are acquiring and and uh, buying so it's a good thing for it's a win-win I think for our community very well thank you any other comments from council any comments from our crowd tonight any remonstrators for or against Motion to adopt. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, please do the roll. Councilman again. This may sound familiar. I love it when homes are built within the city limits to increase our population. I vote aye. Yes, sir. Councilwoman I agree with Councilman McGinn. I vote aye. Councilwoman Brinkoff Riley. <laughs> Councilwoman Robinson. Aye. Councilman Friend. Aye. Councilman Lindsay. Aye. Councilman O'Daniel. Aye. Councilman Weaver? Aye. Councilman Adams? Um, the area plan loved this project. It's really a good one. Sail through that, and it should sail through here. I vote aye. Eight ayes, zero nays. R 2015-21 is hereby declared adopted. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, Council uh, Attorney Danks, may I ask Missy Mosby, our counsel from the Ward 2, a question? <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> You can ask me later. <laughs> Reverend, it's been my experience she can take care of herself. She'll let you know if it's inappropriate. <laughs> okay. Consent agenda? Consent agenda. Second reading of the ordinances and resolutions. Ordinance G, 2015-22, an ordinance amending Chapter 2.160, Information Technology. And I'm sorry, that one got held. Ordinance F, 2015-11, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Evansville authorizing transfers of appropriations, additional appropriations, and repeal and reappropriations of funds for various city funds. Ordinance F, 2015-14, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Evansville approving the annual <coughs> community development plan and appropriating community development block grant, emergency solutions grant, and home investment partner program grant funds. Resolution C, 2015-11, a preliminary resolution of the Common Council of the City of Evansville declaring an economic revitalization area for property tax phasing for the construction of real property and installation of new equipment, Ode Brewery Development, LLC. Resolution C, 2015-12, a preliminary resolution of the Common Council of the City of Evansville declaring an economic revitalization area for property tax phasing for the redevelopment located at 607 East Iowa Street, Evansville, Indiana, Carpenter Court, LP. In Ordinance F, 2015-15, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Evansville authorizing appropriations of funds within various departments. Committee reports, Finance Committee, Chairman O'Daniel. Yes, uh, Mr. President, your Finance Committee about this evening heard Resolution C, 2015-11, and Ordinances F, 2015-11, and C, 2015-12. Each come forward with due pass recommendations. And we've tabled Ordinance G, 2013, uh, to be seen or be heard uh, Early in October? That's G 2015 22 Two. and October 12th. Yeah, great. Uh, is there a motion to adopt these committee reports and move on to the ordinances for a third reading? Second. 
Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So be it. Skip this next page, page 11, and go right to 12. Ordinance F, 2015-11, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Evansville authorizing transfers of appropriations, additional appropriations, and repeal and reappropriation of funds for various city funds. Any more comment about this? Okay, we've already discussed this. Uh, is there a motion to adopt Ordinance F, 2015-11? So moved. So moved. We have a second, a motion. Pro call, please. Councilman McGinn? Aye. Councilwoman Mosby? Aye. Councilwoman Brinkhoff Riley? Oh, aye. Councilwoman Robinson? Aye. Councilman Friends? Aye. Councilman Lindsay? Aye. Councilman O'Daniel? Aye. Councilman Weaver? Aye. Councilman Adams? I vote aye. Nine ayes and no nays. Ordinance F 2015 11 is hereby declared adopted. Ordinance F 2015 14, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Evansville. Approving the Annual Community Development Plan and Appropriating Community Development Block Grant, Emergency Solutions Grant, and Home Investment Partnership Program Grant Funds. Mr. Curris, would you join us with your small wealth of information? I'm being sarcastic. It's huge. I love it. to get my bookkeeper up here. You have before you the mayor's recommendations for 2016's federal programs, federal funding, uh, which you heard at the finance committee meeting, special meeting on last week. Uh, so we're here this evening to uh, take your recommend your decisions tonight if you choose to change anything. You and I would like to just make a special note that the uh, Pastor Brooks and I talked on Sunday, yesterday, uh, about the uh, finance ordinance for 100000 for the market. If you'll remember, last year you approved a grant for Memorial CDC to acquire the Emporia Shopping Center on Lincoln Avenue, which Memorial is going to be in the process of doing some work in there. I believe we're going to open the CDFI in one of the empty spaces there, Memorial's Credit Union, the Neighborhood Credit Union. So what, what, uh, what you see tonight, instead of waiting until 2016 to fund the uh, stocking and fresh food for the market, we had prior year's funds that we can move this year. And so if you'll notice, you, we took off the 200000 that would have been on 2016's budget, and we're doing that 100000 this year. Uh, so that he can go ahead and get that store stocked over the winter. Okay. Any comments, please, from City Council? Anyone from the crowd care to comment on this? Is there uh, a motion to adopt? No, no, no. Oh, I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think, you know, we've heard some of these, and, and there were uh, obviously the, the bus line. Uh, or at least the, the Sunday service was something that we thought would be a really good idea. After after hearing this and receiving calls from different council people and uh, asking, uh, these are the motions that I'd like to make. I'd like to remove 12,000 from number 18. I'm sorry, I'm sorry let me start. I'm going to remove 2,500 from 26 which was the uh is this off the mayor's recommendations or is this off the cac this is this is the total is okay just follow me okay. the mayor and the okay the mayor had okay yeah okay the 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 mayor swerka the mayor had recommended cac recommended 2500 i don't have that shit. i'm trying to swerka senior yeah, the nutrition lunch said, no, the CAC left that zero. The mayor recommended 2500 for a Swarka lunch program. You're correct. The mayor recommended 2500 After their presentation, they did not have a site downtown. They had not had a site. So I'm removing the 2500 from Swarka. Jane, council's removing 2500 from the Swarka lunch program. I just want to make sure we get it all down to yeah. okay. for the finance ordinance. And then you go to number 27, which is voices. The mayor recommended 17,200. Uh, the CAC recommended 12,545. I'm taking it back 
to the CAC's recommendation of 12,545. Jane, <clears throat> council's removing about five of that money. 4,655. From uh, the nursing home ombudsman program. $4,655. From the nursing home ombudsman From 27. Program. They're going back to what the CAC had recommended. I'm going to remove 2,000 from 37, That's which is the Y, which is the Y cap outreach Y-CAP program. program. Okay. The mayor recommended 27. 12,000. 12,000. We're just we're taking it to uh, 10,000. What CAC had recommended 10,333. 10,333. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're taking it back now. 1667 away 10, from the YCAP program. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10,000. Just 10,000. Just 10,000. So you're taking it to 10,333 or no, 10,000? No, I'm taking it to 10,000. To 10,000. From okay, 12,000 so, to 10,000. So we're taking 2,000 away from the YCAP, YMCA outreach program. Okay. Which, when you look at that, all that is, that's a total of $9,155, and I'm putting it into 19, which is the bridge builder program for New Hope, which will transport people where the buses don't take them and give Sunday bus service until the city has Sunday bus service. So instead of... Instead of 30,000, go to 39 change? Yeah, what ha- the uh, CAC had recommended for the bridge builders, 33,834. The mayor reduced it to 30,000, and I'm going to take it to $39,155. Well, just so council knows that this is an anomaly in the public service budget, um, we're working with New Hope CDC to put them into a different category next year so that their allocation won't impact the public service budget as it did this year. The program has to establish itself before we can approach HUD about making them a CBDL, community-based development organization. But once that program is operational and they have results and they can show that they've impacted the economic footprint, we can move New Hope into the category we moved memorials allocations uh, two years ago. But until that time, they need money so that we can. There's plenty of people that need bus transportation in right. the evening and on Sundays. We're so. very excited about that. Yeah, we are. Council as a whole is very excited. And I had several council members call and said, please put money into this program. Yeah. Then I'm going to go to uh, number 73. I would make a comment that that HOPE program is incredibly promising. It could easily be the outsourcing for uh, connections for disabled people for METS. We've had, we've had extensive meetings with um, yeah. Pastor Turner. I didn't mean to interrupt. No problem. Pastor Turner is in the audience mm-hmm. also. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> number 73, we're going to remove 45,000 from 73. And out of that 45,000, we're going to take 22,500 to 83. So move half of it. Yes. I'm going to I'm going to delete that totally. So the rental rehab for rental the, rehab and we're going to put use other So Jane zero out the uh, youth bill program. No, youth youth bill the youth bill is still there for $60,000. Now, this program, Advantage, is part of the Evansville Housing Authority. Right, they use yeah. the youth build and workers not, to do those projects. They, have their, they also have their own construction workers, too. So this is, a prob- this is a program that they can also do. So I think we would be better by using this money elsewhere. Okay. Okay. So at 22583 so that gives 83 a total of uh, 105,000, Jane. 83 is what? Memorial New Construction. New Construction Home Buy. I'm trying to make it for the record. Yeah. And then the other 22,5? The other 22,5 will go to 43, which is the Owner Occupy Rehab Program that Cape has. And that brings that total to? That brings uh, 
to 77,500. Um, is it 77 or does it show zero on the? No, okay, original. it's on two pages, uh, what you have to do. You have to, uh, 43, they moved it over, I'm sorry, they moved it over to uh, go to your home and it's 43 on your home sheet. Right. Yeah, look on your home sheet and you will see 55,000 on there. So you're blending home with CDBG for that owner-occupied rehab. Can't we do that? Because you, you took it from, you have it in this category. You well, have, we just, we need to know, if, if you take it away from home, then it's not going to balance in home anymore. Well, should we move that 22 up to, just make that instead of 77.5, make it 22.5, and then the other 55 will be already in a line item somewhere, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's all going to be home? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, it'll be under home. Okay. Okay. We hear rumblings that home's going to go away in 2017 completely. Well, the block grant concept has not been agreed. I don't think they'll kill block grants next year. I think the home, but I think home partnership investment funds are dead. Okay. okay, let's finish this. Okay, then we're going to go down to the home buyer down payment assistant number 80. We're going to take 10,000 from. Uh, the home buyer down payment assistant, which is bringing that down to 28,772. For Hope of Evansville. For Hope of Evansville. You're subtracting 10,000 from Hope. For 28,772, because remember you only gave them, uh, we reduced the amount that you we're giving them for new construction. So we'll take the 10,000 and put it in uh, down payment assistance for Memorial, so each one of them will have $20,000. Hope will have 28000 for down payment, and Memorial will have $20,000 for down payment assistance. Is that going to number 84 then? Yes, 84. Yeah. Any other amendments? I got one. Well, Stephanie, I think you said you had one. I'll come back to you. Okay. I'll make a motion to remove $12,000 and just zero out canceling for change. That Could you speak up a little bit? I'm sorry. And I also would like to hear, for the record, what we're moving it from to which. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. My microphone wasn't on. I apologize. Uh, I'm going uh, counseling for change, the jobs program. Number 18 has uh, 6,500 recommended by the CAC and 12,000 uh, by the mayor. I'm going to move that all 12,000, oh, no, sorry, 10,000 of that is going to move to Counseling for Change, the Substance Abuse Services, which is where they preferred to have it. And so they will, uh, number 11, Counseling for Change, their Substance Abuse Services will have uh, $10,000 instead of zero. Uh, the remaining 2000 will go to number 20, which is the emergency needs pantry at Cape. Uh, and so that was uh, $5,000 currently, and that will change to 7000 Jane, did you get that? Yes. And then move 10,000 to number 11. Same agency, different program. And 2,000 to Cape Emergency Needs Pantry. That's right. Okay. The other thing I want council to remember is that we, are, we budget these things with an anticipated cut in CDBG. Now, in April, when I go hopefully, to the director's conference in Indy, and I get the actual numbers that we'll have for 2016. The last two years, I've brought back the same numbers that we had the year before, so we had that bump 
that we didn't have to take away. So there may be additional money that we can put towards agencies that may have suffered a little cut so that we could do the big New Hope project this year. Mm -hmm. So last year we, I came back and there was another something like $70,000 that we actually didn't get yeah. cut as we anticipated. And then you're so great and I compliment you and you're always able to find extra money somewhere. So if you can continue, to, if you can do that for us in 2016, well, we, that would be great. We have been looking, that's how we found 100000 to give to Memorial's market program. Um, and we, I, I have put a, we have, we have stopped that process because we're in our real busy time right now with in processing invoices and agencies. But we'll pick up the search for more CDBG probably after November. Yeah. How much have you found this year? Um, Almost two hundred thousand dollars we've reappropriated. Probably two fifty prior I think. years. It's more than that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, two fifty or three hundred. Congratulations. Thank you, Councilman Robinson. Okay, then I have two more motions. Uh, I'm going to remove fifty thousand from sixty six. I know Kelly, this wait, is your. Wait. This is a program that you have in your the uh, rehab program, owner occupied. Where? I'm, which one are you moving? Six, sixty-six. Um, from sixty-six, I'm going to remove fifty thousand. Well, that's the the core neighborhood rehab. Rehabilita yeah, that you. Okay. It's the same. It's a duplicate of what Memorial and Cape is doing, it, but you do it in your office. So. Well, we've made that available to council. Yeah, so, but now, I mean, we're going to give it to somebody else because you have so many projects that you're working on with the hotel and the, uh, the hotel and well, the medical school. You're too busy to help people. I know, but we'll go ahead and let, let them take care of that. I where, where are you moving it? Is I'm, it yeah, I'm going to move, 50, I'm going to move it to uh, 54 to uh, emergency home repair program, the same thing that Memorial's already doing. We'll let uh, them continue to do it instead of... So we'll take. Uh, so you're going to leave twenty-five thousand in the core neighborhood rehab. I'm going to give twenty-five thousand to Memorial. Well, no, you're giving them fifty. I'm re li 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 right. listen, please. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm going to. I'm going to remove fifty thousand from sixty-six. You have seventy-five thousand. I'm going to remove fifty thousand. I'm going to take fifty thousand and give it to fifty-four. Okay. That's okay. what I just said. Okay, 54. then you have 54 two. is what? Please? 54 is Memorial Emergency Home Repair Program. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to take 25. I'll go ahead and take the other 25 from you. You're not taking it from me. <laughs> I'm going to take 20 from 66 from DMD doing that, and I'm going to give it to 63 to the Community Fresh Market. Well, we are appropriating that money this year. You gave them a, you gave them a hundred thousand. They needed two hundred thousand. I'm going to give them twenty five thousand, and hopefully, all that will be collateral for them to use it as leverage to go to the bank to get some more money. Okay. All right. May I ask one question? Uh huh. Um, when we're moving money from the the DMD core rehab program up to uh, the Memorial CDC yeah. emergency. Do they both cover the same territory? Yeah, they okay. cover the same sure. territory. Okay. Instead of... Those are LMI, those are LMI benefits. Yeah. The individual, it's by the individual, not by where they live. Okay, I just it's by to the, make it's sure the the, ver the yeah. income verification has to be on the Perfect. person that's receiving yeah. the service. So no, one, no one's losing their benefits. Perfect. All we're doing is just having another agency. Okay. I just want to make sure because I know that some of my people from Second Ward have, have taken in that. I just want to make sure that yeah. they're still going to be covered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You've had quite a few in the Second had Ward. Quite a few, yes. And the Third Ward. Well, Connie, I'll miss you calling me. Well, I'll still, <laughs> We're not quite done here. Are you, are you, no, I still have some more. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to remove from number 48. I'm going to remove 35000 from number 48. From Garfield Commons? Yeah. And I'm going to add it to 57. And 57. I'm going to add 20000 to 57, I, which is a health care ministry. 20, what? 
Mr. Danks, can I ask a question? Sure. Can I ask you please think about that before you do it because we have issued letters of commitment uh, on ECHO's behalf appealing for, she's applying for tax credit uh, subsidy for that property and that 150 for 2016 is part of that tax credit subsidy that we've that we've already issued a letter in support of. Why would you issue a letter yeah. prior to us authorizing it? Because it, the letter says with authorization of the fiscal body. Okay. But we've, I, I, I would yeah. just ask you to keep it at 150, if at all possible, keep that at 150 because that the capital stack that we're trying to put out there for Garfield Commons is critical in her application for tax credits for Garfield Commons well, for those living okay. units. I'm going to stop right here because it might be some people that disagree with me. So the motions that I've already made, I want to go ahead and I'm making those motions and I need a second. And okay. I'm going to... Thank you. Removing that before. last one. Out. Yeah, removing that Removing the Garfield Commons. Removing the Garfield okay. and I'm going to come back to it. Okay. That's before fine. You do, there some people in the yeah. Um, uh, are we... If, would there... Anybody like to make any comments about this? Hey, wait a minute. Is there any comments from the... Is Garfield better in housing? Veterans can live there. Well, we're not there yet. That's that's not part of this. Yeah, I have a but comment. If there's but we usually don't take comments on this. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. I we're gonna we're gonna listen to this lady who wishes oh, to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you asked for comments from council. Oh, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure how it came out. Thank you, Michelle Mata with Voices. Um, I know that there were. 39 programs and four of the CDBG programs and four of them are being cut. And I just ask you to think about that because we are advocates for nursing home residents and there is nobody else in Vandenberg County that serves the nursing home residents. We are it. So I think it's a little bit interesting that we seem to be one of those that are singled out to cut our budget. Um, and I just, I really ask you, you know, please, please don't cut our budget. We're really small. And it's so difficult for us to offset those funds and to raise them um, because, of, you know, it's myself and it's a, a person who works 11 hours a week. And with serving 19 nursing homes, 2,000 beds, and doing fundraising and all the other executive director jobs there are, it's, it's next to impossible to find a way to, um, to offset those funds. And if any of you have ever looked for funds for elders, it's next to impossible. Kids, there's all kinds of funding, but for elders, there's really not anything out there. So I really implore you to please not cut from what the mayor recommended. If I may comment on also, too. <clears throat> uh, I was going to speak about voices, too. Uh, it's not warm and fuzzy. It's not kids and it's not animals. It's old people. And this, the population that is served by voices is increasing daily. I mean, you know, us baby boomers are in our 60s and 70s, and the nursing home population is going to explode in a couple of years. $4,655 is a drop in the bucket. What is it? One day of a bus service. But it's 10 or 12 percent of their entire budget, you know. And, and you know, if we want to do bus service, I mean, we might as well, I'll bring this up now. I mean, the state legislature has given us the opportunity to raise our local option income tax by 0.25% to fund public transportation. We have that option. You know, that was done in order to make up for the shortfalls that are caused by the property tax caps. And so, you know, we have that entire option. Other cities are doing the same thing, and yet we're taking 10 or 12% of the budget from a, 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 an organization whose work is going to quadruple over the next 10 or 15 years as more of us reach, you know, nursing home time. And then I'll say this just as a personal thing, in six and a half years, six years on this council, I have only one time in my life asked that a, an amount not be cut, and it was this one this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? These are, these are difficult decisions, and I know Voices does an outstanding job. Uh, you know, we did take you back to what the CAC recommended and like we did we did a lot of agencies like that that the CAC recommended and then there were some agencies that the CAC did not recommend it, recommend that we thought was important and I'm sorry I think bus bus transportation 
uh, is very important because people need to be able to get to work and they need to, and it helps the economy and it helps people feel better about themselves if they have a job. And there's so many people out there that don't have transportation to get to work. Thank you, ma'am. I think I would, I think I agree with um, my colleague to my left. Uh, I think there ought to be some way that we can find some funds for your. I, I agree as well. I, I, well, I think they're all great programs, but um, I did work in the healthcare industry for a while and, and I worked and went into nursing homes and I understand completely what she's saying. That, they're just it's just kind of lost and we're all going to be there one of these days and you know we need to make sure that we not only protect our children but we need to protect those that have helped build Evansville what it is Kelly, is there any more, any more money out there that you can find we're only talking about 4,000 more service cap. You can't break the service yeah that's right I'm sorry okay well here's the other thing is that you know there's always found money at the, it's a it's a percentage, it's a right? It's a percentage, it right? Be, so if there's even, might be agencies that don't use all their money. But when I come back, when I finally get the numbers in April, if we haven't been cut like we anticipate, there would be additional money the council could appropriate. That's the point that I was yeah. going to make: is that if there was fifty thousand dollars, fifteen percent of that is going to be seventy-five hundred dollars. No, I understand that. No, but that no. would be that seventy-five hundred, which could then go Kelly, in and would, fund that. Would you do me a favor, Kelly, and remind us of that this particular issue when you come back with a full trough? I mean, I really think it's, that uh, if, if not, not, notwithstanding the the amendments aside, but to say that, look, if there is found money, that we would very much want voices to be funded to the mayor's level, if that money would come available. But a lot of times we don't know. What I recommended to the mayor was we keep it at the prior year's level. Right. And so that's what the mayor recommended. I understand. A Adrian, okay. Adrian yes, Brooks at with Memorial Community Development. Um, because I, I understand the precarious position that Garfield Commons is in as they seek the tax credit um, application and hopefully approval. I would ask that you um, please reconsider any decrease in that particular line because of the, the criticalness of trying to get those points that are needed to make that application successful. And so we, that's one of our, our um, mm -hmm. one of my approaches in community development has always been to try to work with everybody in the community as best we can. And we realize there's limited dollars, and so if if you know we we really want to uh, support Garfield Commons if possible, and so I thought I would get up and uh, speak on my colleague Stephanie's behalf. Uh, Last year for this application, we were able to use TIF dollars under sort of a creative plan. That the the tip, you're talking about the Jacobsville tip, and what you're talking about is the parking lot that will serve right. the structure, and that is still part of the capital stack that Echo Housing will be turning into IHCDA. So what the plan is for the parking lot to come back to the city, the city will spend Jacobsville tip dollars to improve that parking lot and then deed that back over to Echo Housing. That 250000 is still in the capital stack. This is outside of that. What's the total amount that we have to meet? Is it three hundred thousand, half a million? And so, we're almost there. This puts us. This finishes the capital stack. Okay. Well, I won't make uh, since he doesn't want the money and he wants to work in collaboration with Stephanie. I will not uh, submit my last recommendation. Thank you for saving me a heart attack. Before make any comment about that. And in the in, in the future, Kelly, if you can just you know when you make those commitments, uh, when someone's having a tax credit, it would be nice if we knew so that we would we could plan that away when we're trying that we know we can't take money away because you've already made a commitment with it you know trying to get the tax credit. That would help that would help us as council as we try to decide how to allocate the money. Well, every letter that we send is stipulated with consent of the fiscal body. Well, but then so, you avoid situations like this where yeah. it's this proposed an, and then somebody has to come to save the day. This is yeah. extra wrinkle. What were you going to say? Um, I just want to thank Reverend Brooks for 
coming forward to support Stephanie ECHO. Tenbarge. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Stephanie Tenbarge, ECHO Housing. And I uh, hope that you will reconsider. We're really excited about the tax credit project. We feel we may have one of the highest scoring applications in the state with the new QAP. But what, what he's referring to is that your a public financing from the city has to be 5% of the tax credit award for you to get the points. And so we're looking at about an eight or nine million dollar award. Um, and we're pretty excited because not only will it be what Garfield Commons was originally going to be, but there's going to be some uh, lease purchase homes added in the project, which will help with some of the blight elimination and infill in the neighborhood. Um, so again, every little penny helps, so I- Thank you so much. Ask Where's you the to uh, other- Where's the other 150 going to come from? Last year you had left. When this is a, this is the second year for this application, mm -hmm. and you last, year, last year you proved it last year. I know, year. but you've uh, you've only year. accounted for about 400 of the 500 that's necessary through the TIF, and this 150 here. Where's the additional funds going to come was from? It approved last year. You mean you? It's a carryover. It was so leftover we can, funds. We can right. Capital. We right. Can capital. But we're also so that going to go for federal home loan there. bank funds for it. an you additional 500. Yeah. Wow. You did it last year. These are um, very complicated. We have to keep track of a lot of different things for these types of packages to work out. So you're. That's actually money that was left over from. 13 then, 13, is that correct? Yes. Okay, yes, so you you've just sat on it year. for it to happen again in but a new application. It for this project, okay. for the capital stack for her tax credit okay. And in the past, I know we have gone in for a similar project, but the previous QAP was very prejudicial against new construction infill, and it's all been changed. Um, they also now recognize our burn grant, so we get the federal revitalization points. I fought for that. So, um, we're we good. feel really strong about this project. Good. We really do. So we need your support. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> any other comments uh, from anybody at council? I, do you actually think they can get those credits? And what's do you, the, I'm sorry. You, do you believe they can be successful in those? Credits? I believe they I believe this is the year. I believe this is Evansville's year for tax credits. I think mm. because Terry Keish is that he was here earlier. His proposal is in a different category than Echoes. Terry Keish, <coughs> Pioneer Development is a for-profit tax credit developer. Their tax credits don't bump into Echoes. Echo is a not-for-profit. That's why that's why Pioneer Development doesn't ask for city participation. Is because he's a for-profit. I think this yeah. is our year. This comes out of HUD, doesn't it? Is this a HUD grant? I mean, no, it HUD comes out of the IR. It comes out of the Internal Revenue Service. Yes, it, it's part tax of the, credits yeah, are, but, are Internal Revenue yes. Service dollars. Okay. 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 Any that was, uh... <clears throat> so are we voting on this tonight, or do we have time to digest this? And maybe table it. We're voting tonight. We are you suspended the rules. We suspended we the rules to do all three tonight. So we could vote tonight. Yeah. I make the, uh, that was my motion. I'll well, second that. Time out. I would like to oh. ask for a motion to for all these amendments. Is that what you're asking? That's what she did. Yeah. All those in favor, please, of these amendments. Point of order, point of order Mr. President. I'm sorry. Can we vote on these separately? Because th there are five or six motions together. And I am more than willing to vote for all but one of them. So I would I would move to amend her motion to separate out the movement of 4655 from line item 16, which is voices, to the, or I'm sorry, from line item uh, 27, which is voices, to add it to line item 19, which is New Hope CDC Bridge Builders Program, so we can vote on that one separately. Because I do want to vote for all of your other ones. Is there any other? Is there any other ones that you want to section out? Because maybe that's. So, why don't we have a motion we'll do, where we'll have a motion accepting all the changes except for the voices exactly. one? That's the point. The changes I recommend and the changes that that's definitely. But for the voice. Except for voice. We'll okay. Vote on that That'll work for me. All yeah. those okay. in favor of the of the changes except for voice. Please say aye. 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 All right. Is there another motion about voices? Now, now it would be your motion to keep the funding as it is, right? Yeah. I, I move that we keep the funding uh, voices at $17,200 and that we keep the funding of the Bridge Builders Program at $30,000. I second the motion. Well, no, well, wait, the, the bridge, bridge builders, builders was, was to increased 30, to 39. It'd be 35, I think. If, it'd well, be. if you would take bridge builders, take 39.155 from 
Take it down. Jane, are you writing all this down? No, it's just this. It's this okay. Yeah, or I can, I can rephrase the motion. I, I move that we you're do not. What you're recommending, your motion is that you're taking bridge builders uh, from 39155. You don't want that 40. I was putting 4,655 in bridge builders, and you're taking it away. Yeah, that, that'll be my motion. Okay, we have a second. We have a motion. Okay, it's your motion, right? Okay, so it's actually her motion already. No. And then you just. You this is like a separate it. motion. It's a separate. Well, motion. she's already made the motion, though. She's already made the amendment. You've already approved it. We've, we've already we've already voted. Time out, guys. We've already voted on her amendment right. in, uh, positively. We're now voting on his amendment, and we have to do that before we go to the actual vote, roll call vote. Okay. okay. Well, actually, I think just point of order. I think Connie had already made the amendment, okay. and so he asked he asked to remove that from the total. So it's actually Connie's amendment that we have to vote on. If he doesn't want to do that, then he votes against. I thought we'd already voted on. It. No, oh, th those are the four, all but the one. Make my amendment, and you can vote on it or vote against it. I think that's. Okay, then if I made a motion earlier, I will withdraw it until I hear what you say. There you okay. go. Okay. I think we're okay now. We're starting fresh, okay. right? Yeah. All right. My motion is to remove 2,500 from 26, which was Sorkel, and to remove 4,655 from 27, which is Voices, and remove 200 from 37, 2,000, I'm sorry, 2,000 from 37, which comes to a total of $9,155 and put it into Bridge Builders number 19. Okay. That's my motion. I need a second. Second. Okay. You, yes. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, uh, that's unfortunately, that's I, that's right. I would like to vote on everything but voices, but you put these all collaged together. Yeah, because I need to add it because I, that's what the total allocation I'm trying to get okay. for Bridge Builders. All right. Okay. All so, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. 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 Okay, so that six. fails. Uh, I think that. No, it passes. Four, six five. to. You need a roll call. Need a roll, yep. I think it was four or five. Councilman McGinn? Uh, no. I think it was four or five. Councilwoman Mosby? No. Councilwoman Brigoff Riley? Yes. Councilwoman Robinson? Aye. Councilman Friends? Aye. Councilman Lindsay? Aye. Councilman O'Daniel? Aye. Councilman Weaver? Nay. Councilman Adams? Well, as much as I would like to vote uh, more specifically, I vote nay, so it's uh, five to four. It, it passes. Five to four passes. Okay. Okay. So now, with all the amendments, yeah. now we need to vote on the actual, the actual the action. budget the, as the actual ordinance. Okay. And yes. let me Jan, Jane, so you have bridge builders down for $39,155. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. okay. I would strongly hope that you'd be able to find some money for these the voices people. Well, it, and I know depends, you on, it depends on the allocation. I, I, I didn't want an answer. I just want okay. to tell you that. Okay. okay. Uh, do I have a motion on uh, Ordinance F 2015-14? Uh, As, As amended. Excuse me. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Councilman McGinn. I, I can't. I vote no. Councilwoman Mosby. I can't either. I just think we should keep some money in there for voices. Councilwoman Brinkoff Riley? Aye. Councilwoman Robinson? Aye. Councilman Friend? Aye. Councilman Lindsay? Aye. Councilman O'Daniel? Aye. Councilman Weaver? Nay. Councilman Adams? Well, I like the whole package except for one thing, so I vote aye. Uh, so I'm sorry, I know that sounds a little weird, but I, I got to do it with good conscience. 6 3 it passes. So we have six ayes, three nays. And uh, ordinance F uh, 2015 20 14. 14, which is this CD thing. <coughs> the action. So now, now you need to vote on. Did you vote on 15? Did we get the the market? That will be the last. Uh, that's, yeah. That'll be the last of this section. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. So we're on page 14. But you suspended the rules for 15 also. At page 16. We'll get there. Third reading of ordinances and resolutions. 
Resolution C, 2015-11, a preliminary resolution of the Common Council of the City of Evansville declaring an economic revitalization area for property tax phase-in for the construction of real property and installation of equipment, Old Evansville Brewery Development, LLC. Is there a motion to adopt Resolution C, 2015-11? So second. second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Councilman McGinn? Aye. Councilwoman Mosby? Aye. Councilwoman Brinkoff Riley? Aye. Councilwoman Robinson? Aye. Councilman Friends? Aye. Councilman Lindsay? Aye. Councilman O'Daniel? Aye. Councilman Weaver? Aye. Councilman Adams? I vote aye. Nine, eight, zero nays. Resolution C, 2015 11 is hereby declared adopted. Resolution C, 2015 12, a preliminary resolution of the Common Council of the City of Evansville declaring an economic revitali revitalization area for property tax phase in for the redevelopment located at 607 East Iowa Street, Evansville, Indiana, Carpenter Court, LP. Is there a motion to adopt Resolution C, 2015 12? So moved. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Councilman McGinn? Aye. Councilwoman Mosby? Aye. Councilwoman Brinker off Riley? Aye. Councilwoman Robinson? Aye. Councilman Friends? Aye. Councilman Lindsay? Aye. Councilman O'Daniel? Aye. Councilman Weaver? Aye. Councilman Adams? I vote aye. Nine A's, zero nays. Resolution C, 2015 12 is hereby declared adopted. Okay. Now we'll do Kelly's. Yes. Yeah. Ordinance F, 2015 15. An ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Evansville authorizing appropriations of funds within various departments. And this is the 100000 that was found for the market garden? What? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Since we really never had it beforehand. <laughs> well, I'm sure Pastor Brooks would be happy to answer any questions in specifics about what uh, the market is going to be uh, producing what they're going to sell. Uh, we're very excited that uh, Memorial CDC has that shopping center now because we really think it's going to be a lift to that what used to be a real thriving commercial corridor between Lincoln School and the downtown. Uh, if you partner that with the African American Museum across the street, uh, I, I don't think it can miss. Okay. Awesome. Any comments, please, from City Council? None. Any remonstrators? I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call, please, on 2015? 15. Councilman McGinn? This is 2016? Uh, 15. 15. Oh, 15 uh, yeah, this aye. is 2015 dollars. Councilman McGinn? Councilman McGinn? Sorry, I said aye. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I thank probably you. stepped on my, myself, but aye, yeah. Councilwoman Mosby? Aye. Councilwoman Brinkoff Riley? Aye. Councilman Councilwoman Robinson? Aye. Councilman Friends? Aye. Councilman Lindsay? Aye. Councilman O'Daniel? Aye. Councilman Weaver? Aye. Councilman Adams. I vote aye. That passes nine to zero. Uh, this is obviously adopted. Resolution docket. Resolution C 2015-13 docket. Resolution author authorizing temporary transfers of funds for cash flow purposes. Um I'll speak on this real quick. I, I really think this this is really more of a finance kind of ordinance. It did not go through the finance committee. Um, I know that there's certain ways and methods that we can do this, but this seems to circumvent the, the normal process of things where we take out of one fund and put it into another. Um, I think there's also some problems that I have as it relates to uh, the communication between administration and and really myself as finance committee our finance chair but also other uh, individuals on on this council um, frankly disappointed uh, I, I you know we have asked for information concerning the cash balances a spending plan um, for a year and we get a budget that was Two million dollars more. Um, we've we've given inf you know uh, we've given certain recommendations on cost cutting measures to be ignored. Um, frankly, there's some information I'd like to see. I'd like to see what cash investments have been liquidated at this point, what the need is, what the actual amounts are, uh, before I, I I'm 
even consider um, authorizing any any transfer of, of monies from riverboat funds, which we have a resolution dating back to the the bringing of the boat in that says shall not be used for operations shall not. And I understand there's there's some indication that there's well this is really tax dollars or special tax dollars. This is riverboat money, and whether you call it a loan or otherwise, it's being used to fund operations. And and I want to know more about this now how we do it. You know whether we have a special um, whether we have a special uh, meeting next week on this issue or whether we table it for two weeks until we get some more information. I'm open to that. I, you know, I don't want to put anybody out, but I think this is an important thing. And, and not knowing what the need is and, and not having any sort of information, I'm just terribly uncomfortable doing that. So I guess my motion is to table this at this point, and I'll listen to other folks as to what, whether we should have a special meeting or, or bring it up again on the 28th. Uh, if I may, if I, if I may add, <clears throat> I think the article that was in the paper here the other day, I mean, really it's kind of a, bonk, a lot of bonk because what we've been seeing in this ordinance that we came up with, it was to get a lot of transparency uh, between these transfer of funds. A lot of these were always in the past, were always going unnoticed because they're on the same bank account. And and I think this is a, this is a process, not, and it has nothing to do with but it's not personal by any means. What I noticed real quick, we just got the, the, the July um, uh, financial statements when we got our packet on Friday. And what I noticed very quickly, that the difference between the general fund of a year ago to the general fund of this year went up by $7 million, negative by $7 million in a 12-month period of time. I don't know if anybody noticed that or not. It was 3.4 million negative in July of 2012, and now we're up to almost 10 million dollars 12, uh, 12 months later. And then on top of you look at the if you look at the parks fund, it was positive 600 thousand a year ago. It's negative 500 thousand dollar now. A swing of 1.1 million dollars. Now what I'm seeing is this in this particular fund. We got TIF money. The TIF money dropped from 5.1 million a year ago to 1.9 million this year. That's almost a $3 million drop. That is big time money we have here, and we get this thing on a Friday before we get into this thing. I, 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 I'm just I'm baffled by it all. And, and the, the, the fact of it is, is th these funds, you know, it looks like. Wall Street, this is why Wall Street got in problems. There was no transparency. And I think this city needs, we, we need some, have some, some information. For instance, we asked the administration about two years ago to give us 4B analysis of, of the projections and fund balances. I have yet to ever see a 4B analysis. Has anybody seen a 4B analysis on it? Have you? No. No, we haven't had that. I mean, it's, it's, it's cash management. It's hard for me, and I think Connor here, and I think a lot of us here, not knowing that 90 days ago we should have known, especially when we got the July statements and you saw such a big swing in, in, in a 12-month period of time. Huge amounts of money here. Between Parks Fund, the TIF funds, and the General Fund, you're talking about nearly $11 million swing in cash balances well, and John, in 12 months. And it's not only that, but all we've been told over the last year was we are not in fi financial dire straits. That we have 300,000 at the end of last year, we have 900,000 at the end of June. Well, you know, we sounded the alarm. Right. We said, look, we think there's over encumbrances that they're not paying. And it turns out in July, they paid $11 million of, of fees or of, of expenditures, which annualized about $130 million. And that's on an $85 million budget. So clearly they were holding things. And I think that's part of the cash, yeah. cash management. But this is the things that we need to love, we need to know yeah. because clearly the cash crunch did not occur in the last 10 days. Yeah. This yeah. is something that had to have been known for some period of time. My interject here. I mean, we're, yeah. t we're talking about two different things here. I mean, let's compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. I mean, this is brought really the authority 
is Indiana statute 36-1-8-4, which says that the fiscal body, I mean, we can permit the transfer of a, an amount for a prescribed period to a depleted fund in need of money for cash flow purposes uh, from another fund if we determine that these things are met. You know, uh, necessary to borrow money to enhance the depleted fund, sufficient money on account, uh, the prescribed period, the length of this loan from your savings account to your checking account, it must end before the budget year. The transfer amount must be returned to the other fund, and revenues from special taxes or property taxes can be used. I mean, those are the conditions what we meant. This, the state knew that cities and towns who have bills every month yet only receive their tax dollars two or three times a year are going to have to have some mechanism to tide them over till they get the money. I know for a fact from speaking with the controller today that we're getting $25 million like 12 and a half in November and, and 12 and a half in December. That's property taxes that we counted as revenue in our 2015 budget that we're entitled to spend. But we don't have it yet. And so this statute says you can do it. There's even a special fund set up, which is a tax anticipation fund, where you can borrow up to 90% of the funds you want to borrow, uh, right. that, that you think you need. We're only borrowing 8 or 9%. Well, but here's the difference. You know, I mean, this is a different thing. We need money to pay the bills. Controller needs to come up here and state whether now. or not right. we, we're going to be able to meet our bills uh, unless we have this resolution now. We're doing exactly what this body told the, uh, wanted the mayor to do. If we have to transfer money from one account, from our, one of our savings accounts to our checking account, which I did today, by the way, to pay my bills, you know, which I'm sure a bunch of other people in this audience did sometime this year. We have to determine whether or not we need the money to pay the bills. If you guys still, we can continue to argue about savings plans and budgets and that talk still going on, but it's a totally different situation than moving money from those accounts temporarily till we get our property tax dollars of $25 million in November and December. Can we pay our police officers? Can we pay our firefighters? Can we pay the electric company? That, that's, all, that's what we have to determine. It's a question of need, though, too. And, and they've not shown me they need it. Salary. We, we did. We did a. We had Russ. I think we had Russ do. We had Russ do a study last year when we were preparing this for September, October, November, December, and with investments, it never got into what would otherwise be riverboat, arena bond fund, police and fire pension, or rainy day. If we would have liquidated those, which is what they said was going to cost us seventy-five thousand dollars in revenue a year, which is just one side of the ledger or the other, you're still yeah. investing but the same this amount of money. We don't, we don't have to liquidate anything. We just Hold move on it. Hold but, on a one but the point is, but apologies. the point is, is they're just telling us they need it now, and they've not consulted with us. They never said anything that we had a cash crunch coming or looming. They, they've, they've not. We, they have not said that there's a cash crunch looming. You, you've, you've been, and that the council has been saying that for months. We have said it, and we've been refuted by, by the administration. It has not been refuted. There's not a problem. It has not been refuted. I think we told you when the, the ordinance was passed back in May that we were going to be back in front of you because we were going to need to move funds that have been moved in the past by other, by other mayors, other administrations, probably since the city was organized, to move funds from one account to another account, that's Councilman right. O'Daniel. And that's what we're seeking to do today, is to move those funds from essentially what's in the account, there's plenty of money in the riverboat account, there's plenty of money in the rainy day account, to move those funds over so that they can be used to pay current expenses for public safety, pay the city's bills, and move forward and in November and December replenish those funds. And uh, we don't have to ask, ask a question. Time out. Time out. I'd like to ask a very simple question here. Uh, don't you need some time to get the rainy day funds out from the state? Doesn't the state have to approve any kind of move from the from the? I, I think today that we can we we need this authorization today. Yeah. We believe because there was an ordinance passed back in May. Those funds were available to us, so that we could use those funds in order to pay current operating that obligations. That's my question. I asked. Do we need the rainy, auto, the rainy when day? You take money out of rainy day fund. Don't and you're you have take, to take approval you, of the state? And you're going to, I think we do. We do need money from the state, but we've also have the funds in the riverboat. It's not going to be spent so on day work. So you already asked the state for the transfer? We will ask the state for the transfer. And how transfer. long will it take? A week. A week. That's interesting, because a couple of years ago, we asked for $155,000 from rainy day. It took three months. I'm impressed that you could do it in a week. The thing I have about this, and this may be just semantics to you guys, is that this is, quote, unquote, the second payment of this year, but actually it's the first payment for next year. 
This money is coming out of uh, the January property fund, is it not? No, it's coming from it's coming from the funds will be replenished in November and no, December. No, no, I get that. I'm trying to the <clears throat> funds that are going to replenish this. We got paid January and July, right? No, no, I no, think no. we get paid in November June and, and December, December, actually, and then June and December. Yes. June, and June and December. December. It's June and December. And property taxes are pay are arrears. Are, are, so it's, they're in arrears. Yeah. And, and these expen the, the the funds that are being spent, we're, we don't have a spending issue. We're spent everything is allocated is within the budget that was approved by the council, advocated by the mayor last year. Well, there isn't there isn't any more spending out there than what has been approved by well by you. But all. here's the thing. I mean the budget and and. I mean, this is one reason why maybe we need a special meeting, but here's the thing. I don't think anybody wants us to go in and say the budget will equal what the expenditures are, okay? I think what we do is we have always given the mayor, this mayor and prior administration or, and prior councils have given the mayor a, a <clears throat> wide uh, range to, to spend because it includes all... Um, uh, salaries, whether they're filled or not. And so there's always a cushion there. We approved an $85.7 million budget last year. And we expect the mayor through management not to exceed what the anticipated revenues are going to be, which is somewhere in the $79 million range. And so you can't spend more than what you bring in. And that's always that. Now, if, if this mayor, if this administration is going to criticize us for making a budget too big, I'm pretty sure that there's enough of us here who can say, you know what, if revenues are going to be $80 million, then that's all you're going to get. And well, I don't think anybody wants nobody, that. Nobody is criticizing the council oh, for I, anything. I, I'm we pretty sure we were we accused of micromanaging well, we are, in the, it, in the, it, it, in the it, paper it, on it Sunday. Is, it is micromanaging compared to what other cities do, compared to what's been do, done in the city do in the past. Do other cities have a resolution that say that the riverboat funds cannot be used for operations? The other city, most other cities don't Hammond have a riverboat not. fund. Hammond, Hammond does. does not. They Hammond, not. Their, re and their revenue, the funds, their, their the funds are going to be used for anything. The funds are going to be moved over and they're going to be replenished. So they're not being for used. Operations. They're, they're, okay. they're, they're going to be replenished in November it and December. Matter. They're still being used for operations. May I, may I ask some questions? Please. Please. A couple of questions just sure. to clarify because I'm having people texting in and texting in asking what's going on. This has been, in the past, this has been done and money has been transferred in order to cover until we get this money from the property tax, Absolutely. right? It's happened time after time and after time again. And I've been on council, this is my seventh and a half year, and I know we've done it in the past, but there's been a new ordinance that was passed that it that makes you have to come in front of us to do this, correct? That, the, the, the because count, people are asking, why right. is this now? The council has asked for transparency in the past, during during the current mayor's administration, in past years, mm -hmm. prior administrations. All of the fun, all of the funds were into one account, and they were they would use just like I use my check exactly. my savings account to replenish my checking account in between my paychecks okay, but and, and it's, it's exacerbated here because the bulk of the city's funds comes only twice a year I get paid every couple of weeks exactly uh, and so it's much harder to administer those funds and these funds have always been in the same checking account this year in May they were segregated out because the council wanted some transparency to know when those funds were being moved we're here in front of you okay. today to tell you that time has come I, I talked to the city controller's office. Sure. It happens every year about August, and it's going to happen again in March or April. And the funds what? we're talking we're about, what? hang on, the funds we're talking about are the property taxes that, that will be coming in when the November payments that, are due. That will be okay. used to replenish everything okay. that is moved Which from the riverboat in the rainy day. Year after year after year. year, after year. We've never question, approved it. Hang on. I, I would Go like ahead. to talk. Please. My next question is, if we don't do this, this is going to impact payroll. It's going to impact our public safety. It's going to impact our, our citizens, our city employees that have families that they need to take care of. Yeah, it's, the, the funds need to be put into the account so that we can continue to pay the bills that the city has, whether it's veteran or anybody else. Uh, gas bills, electric bills, public employees, safety, our, public our safety, officers, our insurance. firefighters, our city yeah. employees that depend upon us to make sure they have a paycheck. 
and we're here, we're, we're here tonight to tell you we're moving those funds over. That's what you asked us to do, and that's why we're here tonight. We told you back in May that we were going to be before you. I didn't know what the date was going to be. It just happens it's September the 14th. If I, may, if I may add one thing, one thing that's really got me concerned about is I went back since I've been on this council. I've kept every one of my blue books. I, I don't know if all of you have done this or not. I've got every one of them. And I look back and I see July. And, and under the prior administration, I saw balances like 11 million, 16 million dollars in the general fund in July. Now, when, when the property tax caps hit in 2009, it dropped from 16 million down to 11 million. But Wines, uh, Mayor Weinsapple had a strong positive balance in that general fund to a tune of $11 million. You're going to look at them, you'll see it. Now, I see today we're at $10 million negative. That's a $20 million swing from the time when Weinsapple was running this joint. And now all of a sudden we're up to $20 million, and we have not had one spending plan brought before this council. Now, when this happens, when this happens, now, now, I know he's brought up there. I went back and looked at it. We have lost $47 million in total amounts of funds based upon the State Board of Accounts when it came out on 1-1 of January of, 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 of uh, January 1st of 2012 to December 31 of 2014. That fund balance in the totality has dropped by $47 million. These numbers are on the website. You can see them. I am scared. This is scaring the bee Jesus out of me because I don't think we're going to be able to get out of this fund when we get to 1-1 one, one of 16 because we're going to have to turn right around again. What, what are you talking about? I, I, I don't. I, no, I, 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 I'm not sure what you're talking about. I, I'm but I'm sitting there. I sit there and I see there's well, $52 million I, I, in the city. The city is controlling $52 million right now. It has the water and sewer department that has another... 125 that's a million. That's a different, it that's is a, a different, different entity, deal. but the city has 52 million dollars in cash right now, and what we're simply trying to do is to, uh, for cash flow purposes, to move the funds from one account, which is the savings account, which you asked us to create, which we did create, into the checking account, so we can continue operations. So okay, why did we go then? And, and the I, would, I would, I would tell stop, you too. Stop. You know, I, I think hold I have. A second. My colleague has a question. We can, we can play this. Sure. Uh, Marco, what is the sense of urgency? Does this have to be done right away? It, it, it does. And now, what I will tell you is the, we're asking for the $8 million transfer. That's not going to be spent tomorrow or next week. That takes you through the end of October when the tax payments start to come in. So uh, I think there's a payroll coming up, Russ, September 25th or so uh, to the, for, the, for, for the public safety. That's, that's critical. Uh, and, you know, you want, to, you want to be able to do that. You want to be able to pay your bills as they come in. And I understand that. Being a business owner myself and always wanting to meet payroll. But how long? It how long seems like know? there's a sense of urgency. When did you discover this problem? Well, you know, we told you back in May. That we but were, how did you prepare for it? I mean, now that it's a sense of, it seems like well, a sense think, of urgency that we need to vote on this tonight. Well, I, I think I think there was a meeting in the mayor's office, and I think uh, uh, Councilman O'Daniel, you were there in the mayor's office. They told you that this was coming a week and a half ago. Before. We were at, we were at a budget meeting, talking about the budget right. in general terms, and he said, "Oh, just a heads up, we're going to be asking for a transfer on the 14th." That's correct. Now. He didn't say it would be by resolution. I thought it was going to be by finance ordinance, which is the way normal business runs in this in this in these halls. That's the way the normal business well, works. We're asking for money moved here to here, first reading, second reading on the twenty eighth. We have not been given any data as to what the current balance is, how much has been liquidated out of um, investments, because as as Russ would know, you may not have been privy to it, but one of the things that I said uh, when we were proposing this ordinance back in April, at least the amended ordinance, was that you'll just have to liquidate those assets. Liquidate those investments, 
put it into short-term investments through the Hoosier Fund or whatever it may be, use it all down, and that's why we had him do that analysis but, but why, from last why, year, showing that we weren't going to need would, to get into it. Why would we do that when you start to liquidate CDs? Number one, you're losing the interest accrual, and that's not substantial. You have, Actually, a, penalty, you have a penalty on that when you liquidate some CDs early. Why would you do that when you have plenty of funds that you could move from one account to the other? Because you would invest, you would invest the riverboat money, which is for capital projects, and that's the money that would continue to be invested, and that money would be on that side of the ledger where it properly should be and it would also force some fiscal restraint on the part of the administration when they're dealing with things uh, something again, that we have not been privy to one bit when we asked for a spending plan oh we got one it was a spending more plan as Steve Schaefer said he, 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 he's smug he's being over there smug right now but we said when is the spending plan going to be shown to us he said you'll see it in the budget <laughs> now that's out of his words we talked to Dan Hedden last year, probably back in July or August. July. And on the phone, he talked about, well, yes, you're right. We need to have a spending plan. And so for 13 months, we've been waiting for it. And now we find out in a meeting with the mayor, oh, by the way, our cash is low, and we're going to come and, and ask for it, yeah. and not been shown anything. And in fact, the only thing we get, the only thing we get is a blue book which gives us our July 31st numbers. We don't know what August 31st is. We don't know what today well, is. Well, you don't know what August 31st is because it's but, not being. But we should know if, if you're saying that there's a cash crunch and we, we need it today, then you know what? That means that the controller's office knows how much money's in the bank. It may not be reconciled, but you know how much is in the bank. Just as, as you would say with your it's checking. Not, it's not, it is not going to change between now and whenever you decide to do it, Councilman O'Daniel. The fact of the matter is that every year, every year, in every administration, there's been a cash crunch, as you call it, in the August time frame. But it's never been a problem the, because we've overspent be, by $25 no, it's, million it's dollars over the last It's never been a problem years. before because... The, the we controller's had office had the ability to move funds from one account to the other, which and we took had, away from us. And we had $25 million more this time four years ago. I think that's but, the number. Okay. Um, it's never mentioned. Just real quick, on the $29 million, John, if you recall, in the 2011, a bunch of that was arena bond money. That was well, no, no, I went funds. back and looked at that. When I when I went back and looked at that, I pulled that out and I reconciled to that deal. I yeah. pulled all that out of there. What occurred was it came down to an eighty eighty four million dollar number, okay? And we're sitting after three years later, we're sitting at seventy one million, but you gotta take mil ten million out of it because you borrowed eight point four million from old National Bank, plus you had the bond of that on that new outfit coming in in Jacobsville. That's another one point two million. That's ten million. So you stick that out of there. We went from eighty five million down to sixty one million in three years. But but where did the money come from? I mean if if we're asking They're not collecting the money, no, Dan. Where did the, you're talking about this account in twenty eleven, where did the money come from to buy those properties on Main Street? Where did the money come from to pay the ten or twelve million dollars to buy the hotel back after we paid somebody Ten or eleven million dollars stared down. I mean, that's where the money went, John. We can track it. We had to spend it in order to get the you downtown hotel. You know, one of the hotel. things, if you recall, in 2012, uh, this administration took the water and sewer money that was in the one account, moved them to their own separate accounts, right. which was the state board had asked the cities to do for many years. That was a recommendation. Uh, if that hadn't have been done, we wouldn't be here because all that money would be in that one account. But it's kind of like a Ponzi game because it happens within the same bank Ponzi. account. What were you talking about? You, well, for instance, Russ, you went over there to the utility department at the end of last year and took $2.5 million from them, took it over here, and nobody on this council even knew about that. Two point four. The pilot. Two, two point was two around two point five million, and <laughs> if you hadn't done that, we'd been upside down a general fund. Not one person on this council knew about that. Now, is that not a Ponzi scheme? I don't know what it is. On, uh, I mean, you've recommended before that if the general fund runs short, that the city should look to borrow riverboat that, that, or use that, riverboat to that, offset that. That was in that was in the audited financial report when the state board of accounts said that we, by law, should not be negative in any bank account, general fund account. And your response to them, I read it, said that we had the options to go in and borrow those funds. 
Right. I mean, that was your comment to the State Board of Council. I read it. It was it's clearly in the in the response back to the State Board. Right, but that's subject to council approval, just well, like any borrowing would be. I guess the irritation is we don't hear much from you guys over there until we have a fire going on. I talked to the county auditor the other day. Their general fund's minus five million. I mean, it, this is not unique to Evansville. Uh, in September, October, gov local government runs short until they get the property tax money. I gave you that cash flow forecast. Yeah, I mean, and and that's what I've got okay, from guys, back in. I'd, uh, in I'd like somebody else to talk for a minute. Oh, sure. Okay. Look, I know we got to make payroll, but let me explain it to you my irritation. I got this app called Pandora, right? And periodically through the day, I got to listen to a commercial that Lloyd Winnicky says, I've spent less money than city council has budgeted every year. And what drives me crazy about that is because it's a distraction of irrelevance. You and I, all of us know that we inflate revenue and expenditures to submit up to a state agency so that we can get the highest tax rate possible and collect the most revenue possible because we've got property tax caps, we've got people that don't pay. So we pass false numbers. We do it like every other city. The system makes it do it. We throw up revenue and expenditure numbers, and then uh, we back into that through a tax rate and typically collect 10, 15 percent less than what we've estimated as revenue. And so when we pass an expenditure number, that's a favor to you. Because if, I, if we were to pass an expenditure number that actually tracked revenue as we really believe it to be, you wouldn't collect it because the tax rate would be set on that lower number of expenditure and you'd actually collect less than that. So we inflate those numbers. You know, we don't, no mayor is spending what is budgeted in expenditures because it doesn't exist. It doesn't come in as revenue to spend. So, I mean, that's a grand distraction and a red herring. But when I look at the 2012, 2013, 2014 annual reports, this administration spent more than it took in in the general fund. And when you add up that overspending, you know, three and a half million in 14, if you adjust for the 2.5 that we borrowed out of the next year, 2.7 million overspending in 13, couple million in 12. I mean, there's your money, there's your cushion, there's your 8 million that you could be floating your budget with right now. And so, although I understand that inevitably we have to do this, we get tired of hearing that we pass budgeted and you come in and you spend less than what we budget. You're supposed to. The revenue doesn't exist to do that. And we can't adjust anything in real time. We don't see these blue books till 60 or 90 days later. You know, if we were using the accrual method of accounting, like in 2012, like that annual report, we would know our position in terms of what was coming in terms of our expenditure. You know, and you're borrowing, you know, you say that you've got $52 million floating around out there. Why would we need to get into our rainy day funding? I mean, why would we even do that since that requires us to contact the state? And that doesn't make any sense to me because the COET and riverboat funds that are budgeted for 2015, I mean, the, the revenue that we're taking in this year in COET and riverboat, we're also spending. In fact, 2015 spends more COET than we take in, according to the budget, because we have a little bit of surplus. So the frustration is in the game that gets played out there in the public to win an election or to create a facade that everything's going great, and it, but it doesn't change the fact that you're spending more than you take in in revenue. And that's what this this is really about, 
You know, they're your annual reports that show you spent more in total expenditures. And when we cry about property taxes, that's only 60% of your revenue. So these, oh, we only get our money in two year annual installments. That's not true. I mean, 40% of your revenue comes in in a constant stream, whether it's permits or people going to the zoo or riding the bus. And we have 40% of our budget that isn't tied to these two tax payments, and we can't make payroll. Everybody has expenses. I have expenses. It takes 100% of my income to pay my expenses. So whether it's 60% or 55%, I'm not even going to argue about that, uh, Councilman Brinker Alf Riley. It's simply, it's simply a matter of this. There are, funds there are funds available that the city could use in order to pay its operating expenses. No, no, it's I get that it. straightforward. We're tired of the accusations that are made Nobody in the is, media well, well, and the picture that is painted out there in this political campaign that is completely inaccurate and fails to I, acknowledge that you're spending more than you take in in revenue on the civil side of the budget. That's really what my frustration comes down to, is I get tired of hearing it. Well, you budgeted it. And we all know that that's not an accurate argument. It's not even about those budget numbers, because we all know they're not real. When I mean, you're floating a budget for 16, that's $87 million in expenditures, $89 million in revenue, and we all admit here in the hearings that we'd be lucky to collect $80 million. So those revenue and expenditure numbers aren't real, we and are, I'm tired of getting beat well, over the head. We with are them. working with the council right now on the, on the budget for next year. I'd like an accounting of the 52 that's available. Where is it at? What is it? We can do that. And the fifth, not all of that, and the reason it's coming from the rainy day fund and the reason it's coming from the riverboat fund is not all that $52 million is available to use for operating expenses. Sure, you our, got pension, our point, you got Our point TIF. is that this, the council has continuously, I mean, we're talking, if we're talking politics and election, the impression being given is that the city is broke. The city is not broke. So how much of the 52 is that you were just talking about how the city has in cash, how much of that is actually available for operations? Well, there's 14, uh, roughly 12.9 million, I think, in the riverboat fund right now. There's 2.9 available in the rainy day fund. Those are the two funds that we're looking at. So it's not 52 million. The city has, it is 52 million. Yeah, the city obligated. does have 52 million but in it's cash. And it's obligated or it's or restricted from your use because it's it got is. another purpose. Some of it is. So what right. you really have right. available is roughly 16, 15, between 15 and 16 those are the million? Two fun, those are the two funds that we are looking at. Okay, but I asked been, you what's really available out of the 52 for operations. I couldn't, I can tell you those two funds okay. right now. I so, couldn't tell you if that's the, the extent of it, but I do know that those two funds are available for use in order to fund operations. So, and if we, want to, if we want to continue operating, no, those no, funds need it, to be but utilized. But it seems kind of sad. Plus, then in a budget this big, you know, that what we can scrounge together to pay our bills but the, is 16 million, and three million of that but, is but our that, rainy all day of that, All of that is short term, because it's now September the 14th. Those funds are going to be coming back in 60 to 90 days. It's a short term movement of funds that have been done every year, every year until this year, and and. I get it. You know, this was passed. They, 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 you've asked for some transparency. We're giving you the transparency. We're coming before you now and telling you we need those funds from those accounts to move them over. In the past, that wasn't done. Whether it was a Republican or a Democratic administration, it wasn't done. No, it could come right. from the sewer department it's just before worse. That's right. I don't think it's gotten worse. Well, I think it's, it's the same. You're uh, overspending uh, on an annual basis. It is getting worse. I mean, we've watched yeah. the general fund balance go down. You could, only through a manipulation of the numbers were you able to end last year on an even number, on a positive number, or hit your mark on June 30th. You know, you just get tired of fighting against an argument that somehow these problems don't exist. They obviously do. You're right. We've always borrowed these funds to operate, but the need has gotten worse 
and we need them more often. And these are funds that are sli slated for capital projects. They're good, and it's going to be used for capital projects. Well, and not be used for capital projects in the next 90 days. Probably not. But there then they're going to be obligated there. the next year or the year after that. Or, or but that's, those funds being, are going to be back in no later, and I think the resolution says that, no later than December 31st, probably then, be back in and before the, and then. And then in, in April we'll be asking the same thing, or March. Uh, probably. So what probably. you're saying, uh, Missy's not the only one that's getting texts from her constituents. I just got yeah. one, and they want to know, is our city going to remain solvent? Yes. yes. <laughs> With the I mean, funds no being depleted, will we be another Detroit? I mean, some of the 52 million, I can just go down the list. Motor vehicle highway, 705,000. Local roads and streets, 1.7 million. DMD economic development, 879,000. Of course, and I the assume rainy that day, you've used that, right? But it's part of all the cash available to the civil city in yeah. those funds. So borrow from there. Uh, I mean, the Jacobsville is in that fund. It's it's restricted to use in Jacobsville. Three point eight million. Well, it's just a loan. It's Local loan. income tax, four point six. It's million. just a loan. Well, what's, what, what, what is the problem with moving it from the riverboat fund or the rainy day fund into the account? Whether what, what call it whatever account you want to call it. Because one, we have a we have a resolution predates me that says it shall not be used. Shall not be used for operations. I don't care what you call it a loan or otherwise. This is used for operations. And it has, and, been, it has been since the and, and, and Which the is exactly why done. we asked to segregate it, because we wanted transparency, because we've been told, well, let's see, last year this well, why, time why, we were told that why people now? were invading the pensions, and so we said, no more. We can't have that. We need to get those out of there. And, and Administration agreed. <coughs> Keep the pension separate. Well, we Secondly, didn't agree they were being fund. invaded. We rainy just, day we fund. Agreed we didn't to separate want them. That's all right. You, you agreed to it because it made a lot of sense. So, Connor, what's your solution? Stop <laughs> spending money like it's going out of style. So, how are we going to oh, pay the 87. police officers and firefighters? I mean, 87% of the general fund is personnel, so are you saying like. Can we go people? get a loan? A separate loan? <clears throat> From where? Hey, a bank, if we're in that good a situation, or the state, or the state revolving fund, where they do have or the bond bank. bank. But why, why would why we, do, we do? Why that? would we do that when we have the funds available that we can take care of that now? Why? Because I don't, if, we if, if my keys. checking account is on zero, I don't go to Old National Bank to borrow money. I move it from my mm -hmm. savings. But here's account. the thing: if I've got a savings account to, let's just say, buy a washer and dryer for a thousand bucks, okay, right. or two thousand bucks, right, and I know what my rev I, I know what my income is, and I look at my expenditures, and they exceed my revenue every month, every year. Guess what? When I borrow from my savings that I'm trying to save for a new washer and dryer, at, at the end of the year, it's not there anymore. And and that's what the riverboat fund is supposed to be because we are looking at that's we're looking we're, at that's not projects for the zoo. We're, <clears throat> this mayor has talked about Roberts Park. We've talked about. Um, not in the budget this year. Well, not this year, but the thing is, you've got to save money in order to do big projects. We've talked about Mesker Amphitheater. We've talked about, you know. The land bank, 1.5 million. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it never ends. And the problem is, is if you, if you allow the invasion of these funds, mm -hmm. which are earmarked for capital projects, or what I would like to earmark for capital projects, if we start getting into it once, then you know what? Then the second time's a lot easier. You've been, than the you've, third time. You've been doing it since March. 1995. And but what had the money? Nice. There was there was not. It was not since yeah. 1995. Well, that's when it's, the riverboat. That's when it started. Before before right. it was 1995. And you Mary borrowed McDonald's, it from this from and the Mary McDonald's water and sewer was utility. diligent in making sure that that money was put aside yeah, right. and not to be used. Right. And by the way, let me ask you one thing. Out of that money that the mayor says, 10, almost 10 million of that is police and fire pension money. I'm looking at it right here. Yes, it is. I'm looking at it it's here. Either, He's counting that within the system. Now that's the other thing. Get it? You also have state. Part of the 50, I, yeah, I'm, I'm saying there's all that, kinds of money in the 52 million. I, I understand that, but part of it, it I, I, you got about almost 20 percent of it in in the police and fire pension funds. Now in the yeah. past we were we were making payroll on that until this council took took it. No, no, but, no, no. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did because they liquidated. I talked to state board of council about this. We only need one million dollars in liquidity in those, in those investments. We were running three and a half million many times. I watched this. Trust me, I did. 
And that we had almost two and a half million dollars of police and fire pension money hanging out there making these these checks good. That's not what we're talking about today. Well, though. I know, yeah. but but they're saying that's part of that 52, and that's not. And uh, you, you got that in there. They're, they're, right. they're, one more thing. May I add one more thing? I, I, I just, you know, I'm retired now, but I have to still be a lawyer, and I'm going to the statute. The uh, the the money can only be temporarily transferred. It, uh, for a prescribed period. The prescribed period must end during the budget year in which the transfer is made. So we can only borrow it. The longest what we can have it is till December. Borrow from who? What happens from if uh, another from account of the city. From another fund. Yeah. We're, we're what from happens if it doesn't State revolving fund. fund. Well, it says the amount transferred must be returned to the other fund at the end of the prescribed period. Yeah, and, what, what and, happens if what, And that's what, what our resolution then asks it's for. It's locked up. Make an emergency petition. Gotcha. Okay, I'd like to hear what this young lady has I mean, to say. Who's no, I don't. I, I don't claim to be the financial expert, but I just want to make it clear that you know, for years the general fund does run negative come around August and April of every year until the funds are deposited from the county government for the taxes, and that's all I. Okay. That's all the point I want to make. But Jenny, since July. When when. When this administration started, I think, Russ, you'll back me up on this, $9.9 .9 million in LIT is what we had. Now, so if the general fund shows a negative 9.9, .9, we had LIT at 9.9, .9, and so that's a net zero. So we still had money there. We never had to invade yeah, Riverboat. And, and we never I'm had not, to invade I'm not going, I, I'm not making that statement. I'm not saying that we used Riverboat in prior administrations because you I'm not. But exactly, we didn't. But what I'm saying is that the general fund runs negative, and it runs negative throughout the state. We understand that. But there's always enough money in other funds like LIT, like local roads and streets, like, you know, you, there's 40 different funds that go into the, the one account. And so, you know, parks is in that as well. Well, unfortunately, parks, parks is negative is a half a million, right? And the, the reverting fund is negative. And there's a lot of negatives on there right now. And we get that. And the problem is, is when you were the controller, we didn't have that problem because we had enough money to cover all of the deficiencies the general fund would face come September or March. Right. And, and I haven't done that analysis to see where we would have covered it from. I just, I'm merely here to support the case that the property taxes on the general fund do run negative throughout the year based on the fact that we only get property taxes twice a year and, you, and that's all you were the controller did you use riverboat funds i can't say that i use riverboat funds and i can't say that i didn't i mean all the money is in the same checking account so i didn't use well, one fund over the other did you have enough money in other funds so that the riverboat money would never have had to been touched I didn't make. I, I, I can't yeah. answer that question because I didn't look at it that way. But we we had, had a checking account big, with all the funds. Fund. Yeah, yeah. That, and utilities. Yeah, yeah. and the utilities was in there also. So, I can't stand up here and, and make that statement because I don't know, at this time. But the only, like I said, I'm just up here to let you know that it runs negative every year, at two periods during the. The year and okay. it will stay negative else, until the property taxes come. What else do we want to talk about it tonight? I mean, I went that one year when I was a department head under a previous administration, uh, we discussed in the weekly cabinet meeting, and money was borrowed from the water department to tie it over until the November payment was made. A friend of so mine was let me ask you this. at that time, and they did transfer money out of water yeah. to the city for okay. a couple of months. So that was 2004. Can, can the water department make that transfer now? No. Not, no. Not because it's it's separated out. Exactly. And Just you, like riverboats now, separated been, out. These accounts have been separate. That was separated out because of a recommendation made by the State Board of Accounts. Uh -huh. The State Board of Accounts made that recommendation because they said at the time that the city had uh, funds available out of the riverboat account to cover these kinds of shortfalls that occur simply because the system is set up only to pay the city a couple of times a year. Well, they said it. They said that differently. They said it should be set up separately because it's a separate entity, and, and we shouldn't be commingling that. But money. they also said that that the uh, the impact of that because the city, well, like like was she just told you, the funds all went into one account, and you know. Which account did it come out of? I don't know. When I put in checks from my 
thing. I don't know if it's a check from Zemer, Stamen, Weitzel, and Shoulders so, or some check from someplace so, else. You know, the, the thing is the arena bond fund's in there, the rainy day fund, the riverboat. You know, what would the bond underwriters say if we said, you know what, we got $8 million in the arena bond fund. Let's take it out of there and let's pay our payroll. What, what would the bond underwriters say if we don't make payroll or don't continue to don't continue to pay our vendors uh, when when the bills come due. What well, about? I, mean, okay, hold on a second. I don't think that's going to. I don't think that that's going to do any um, good either. Is Mr. Delucio, if I may. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Councilman um, O'Daniel is correct. I mean, typically this would be filed as a finance ordinance. We would have first reading tonight, and then it would uh, be set off until the next council meeting, roughly two weeks from now, for the council to vote on it. And the purpose of that is, is so that they can digest it, they can ask questions, they can get answers and that type of thing. I, I, uh, but I think that it's legal to do it by resolution. Uh, I think a problem that some members of council have is that this was filed last Wednesday. Uh, they don't receive their packets typically until Friday or sometimes Monday morning. And it's a, it's a request for roughly an $8 million transfer. Uh, so, um, I'm under the impression that the council would like to have more time to kind of find out what's going on, why it's, I understand generally why it's needed, uh, but I think that some members of the council, what they don't understand is why it wasn't done by way of ordinance, why a resolution, so it has to be passed in one night, and so I guess my question is, is what would be the harm uh, if this was uh, was to be put off until the next council meeting. I, are, are you indicating that payroll can't be met? I mean, is it that low that, that, that you can't wait until the next council meeting? Let me, a couple of quick points. In uh, 2004, this, the council took up a resolution to borrow money from the utility, $5 million, and they suspended the rules and did it all in one night. And that I was assume in, that was an emergency of some type. Well, the only one that would have been on the council then was Connie. But, but anyway, That's I, I a couple guess of years my, ago. again, my question is, what would be the harm? And I'm not being argumentative or right. anything, but it might resolve the issue. Well, and like, what we would, would be the harm if it's set off to the next? Do you have enough money in your? Uh, the city would have account? to liquidate investments, and the ones that will really suffer would be the vendors of the city, because we would have to concentrate on making the payrolls, and vendors wouldn't get paid. Well, can you wait one week? I mean, we can wait. Uh, can you make payroll? Yes. Yeah, that's no problem. I mean, I, I don't know about council, but I'm willing to come back here next week. And, yeah, I think a special meeting is in order. And uh, you give us some time to... It really is kind of odd that you didn't go through the usual channel of, um, of this thing through this finance committee. To tell well, you the well, if, if I could just comment, oh, I mean, please. you all are members of the finance committee. Well, there's, actually, there's actually three, technically. Three, but, yeah. but you're all members of the finance Real committee. Right. It's true. We, we know we, the mayor, however you want to say, he mentioned it. He mentioned it on September 4th. Have you had in any? Passing. We didn't see anything. We didn't know the You amount. were seated. We were talking about budget issues. But he didn't give us a number. He just he, said it's yes. coming. He said. That's all no, he said. sir. He did not yeah. give us a number. Okay. So that was September 4th. And he certainly didn't say and I don't think it was coming from either. Has, did, has anyone called did you the call controller this man? and asked? Did you call him? We notified to say it's coming. It's thing. being we filed. We said it's being filed. We filed it. There's been no, no one had a question at that point. So why now? Oh, I, I think no, I said don't be so sure. What about the other ones? What about the other ones? Well, I, I we, think we I figured that the council, we figured that the finance chairman would notify the council. Can we stop the political grandstanding, Mr. President? We can, we can, we can, we can play the game what was said and what wasn't. Well, I'm just saying September 4th, so now we're going to What do you want to do tonight? We'd like to pass it. Let me point a couple of things out. Um, the cash flow uh, projection that I gave Councilman Friends showed about a four million shortfall in the end of September and about three and a half the end of October. Russ, when did you give that to me? When did I get I that cash that flow? Uh, was it Saturday? Saturday? Yeah, it was five o'clock Saturday evening. Uh -huh. I've been working all day, you know. So Sunday, you know, I spent a little family time. So I may have had a day. I got I got deadlines tomorrow. You know what's going on tomorrow. So I'm up to my my behind in in, in all kinds of work. I don't have time to go through all this stuff. And I think Councilman, I uh, I uh, you just got it tonight. I would ask. The other I ask thing. a question: What do cities do that don't have riverboat? I mean, if this has existed forever, takes a loan, don't they? 
They do a tax anticipation loan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've had the riverboat since 95. Yeah, but I mean, why, lots again, of cities don't. Again, again, I would ask, why would we go borrow the money? I'm not money encouraging you to. I'm just okay. curious because we're you. Look, I get what we have to do. I never said I wouldn't do it. I, I just am angry at sort of the way the situation or came up and, and having to listen uh, to all of the politicization and the competing that, you know, we don't have a problem, uh, when obviously we do. But there are plenty of cities, I mean, if everybody gets a shortfall and everybody only gets paid into tax installments, as you claim, then there's plenty of cities doing something else. Well, the Indiana Bond Bank has numerous cities, they do like tax anticipation loans. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. so that's an option. Can you can well, we do why do we do that? Again, 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 it's an option. Sure, it's an option. We could do that, but again, we're sitting here with the cash available. Why would we go and go, go to that expense to borrow the money and pay the interest? Because it doesn't there. create any discipline in how you spend the money. That's really what it comes down to. There's yeah. no discipline that's created. The, the money if you is, have the, to go money borrow is, the money from is, somebody else, now you know you got to pay it back. The money is being spent, 80, yeah. and you heard Ross tell you that 87% of the general fund goes to employees. And most of those employees, a big chunk of them, are public safety employees. So, you know, when you talk about fiscal discipline... And, and what has happened over the last two years to try to trim that number? What spending what, plan has been presented to try to trim that number, knowing that you're going to go negative? Well, part of that we're has to do with health care insurance, years. and efforts are being made to do that. You're <laughs> neg negotiating contracts. You're not giving raises that you would like to give to city employees. All those things. Well, this mayor's done. asked for another percent, I knowing think, that we don't have the money for it. I mean, that, that's what we're getting. Uh, Let's give it away. I, I think I heard somebody the on the council suggest there ought to be two percent. Yeah, so that's true. I mean, you know, you, you want to you want to reward your employees. A one percent is below the cost of living. You want to be able to continue to keep the employees and, and keep them competitive, so you don't lose them until you can't afford the numbers that we have. And well, then, and then, then you're talking instead of 280 uh, police officers or 270 firefighters, you're talking about a 10 percent reduction again, this across is, the board. This because is, now you have. I don't to think this is I'm anything different that. than what was. I'm not advocating that either. Have we taken any money from the fire and police pension to pay bills? No. no, they can't now because they, they we, we separated that. Separated. Oh, in, in, in a little bit of attempt to sort of get some closure here. Um, would you be willing to come back and give us time to digest of why we need this and so forth like that? Would you want to come back two weeks or would you think it's of an emergency nature that you would want us to come back in one week? I don't think it's an emergency, but it, two weeks is going to be... But I, I don't cut. want you to... Be no. borrowing from We're not taking borrowing. out loans and things, things like that. I, we have investments that can be say, paid. Please, please say what you want to say. Thank you. You know, my concern is if we wait two weeks and you mentioned, oh, yeah, we can pull it out of this or pull it out of that, I hate for us to lose more money taking out a loan or doing this when we've got money sitting there and you're going to... There's an agreement that that's going to be put back in once we get that money. Yeah, I don't. But listen, I, he said he wouldn't have. It's I, not a dire need. He could wait for a little while. Well, I don't. I don't think we said that. I, I think what I, I said. Wait a minute. I, I asked this Friday a payday. I asked a very precise question. I'd like a precise answer. I, I mean, want our people to get paid. Yeah. I want our public safety to get paid. He I said he could. Didn't you say you could make payroll? We this have Friday? on uh, the 25th. Public safety, police and fire payroll is about 1.7 million. 1.7 million? Yeah. And you can't make that? No, we can make it. But, but what will you have to else, do? Everybody else, we will have to budget, and vendors that are making claims on the city will not be paid. Do me a favor. Could so you we won't pay our question? bills. The question I ask is, do you want to do it in a routine fashion? You want to do it in a routine fashion, or would you like this August body to come back in a week? and give us time to digest what we've been talking about tonight. Can you do that? Come well, back we, in the emergency meeting. We can meeting if that's we, the council's we, desire. We've got yeah, a motion out to that. Motion. Well, I'd prefer to come back in two weeks, but... Okay. Well, I'd like to go. Well, I prefer to do whatever that's going to help our city employees. I know. Part of this... Part of we'll this, give you... Time out. Part of this is the brand new system. This is the first time you've come to us with this thing. Right. Well, and I think it, it was not done as diplomatically as you could have, but for what it's worth. And we can talk about what was said and what wasn't said and so forth and so on. So if we're breaking new ground, 
And I have no desire to uh, withhold funds so that you can't pay your payroll whatsoever. But I do see this little tiny ordinance as a nightingale in the coal mine. If you have to come to us twice a year and say, we're coming earlier and we need more money, we're in trouble. But you, sh in, the, in the concept, you guys like transparency, you ran on that issue. If you can come back and say, we don't need as much money as we did the last six months and we're coming in later in the process, that looks great. So I would like to keep the process intact and this first Mail him, maelstrom we're going through. I, I, I'd like to, for what it's worth, I, we have not got, we haven't hammered out a pro process. I would like to make a motion that we come back in one week and discuss this again. In two weeks. We can, two weeks. There's, there's no, no sense. I mean, coming for a special meeting and for everybody to come back down, we can come back in two weeks. Okay. Uh, but, you know, now, wait a minute. You right. the, it's the, the, the same it's issue, okay. the same. In, in, you're saying it's okay to come back in two weeks rather than one week? We can, we can, we can do it in two weeks. But here's, and just this. What is we don't want to do points. is come back in a week and say, "Gee, we right. only had a week to think about this because uh, we're trying to get it." Well, what what I would like to see, though, I mean, the three days. The things I'd like to see, I think, two weeks. I think, Ms. Robinson indicated she'd like to know where the 52 million is, what is available to be spent, and from you know what source. What the actual cash balance is, you know, in real time, not July 31st or anything of that nature. What the investments are and what can be liquidated and what can't. Some may be longer term, some may be in the Hoosier Fund, which is day to day. So, I mean, those are things that obviously we'd like to see. And question, and, and really the number of encumbrances and who needs to be paid. I mean, we'd like to see all these things. So we get a true sense of what the need is going to be. Is yeah. it, you know, I mean, again, I the, true sense, the true sense is what we were asking for. It was the $8 million. That we're going to be $8 million the, short. Over, over, the, over, the, over the two month yeah. period that will be replenished in November and December. I don't know. That's probably not going to change in two weeks. Well, well, I like to see. Account payables. How much accounts? What's the account payables? Do you know now? I don't have that. I'll get yeah. it. I'll get it for you. Russ, what I like to see is your, four, your 4B analysis by, by, by fund. Because we, we, I'd like to see where we're going to be with these funds. I, I mean, those for f 2015, those are posted on Gateway. On Gateway? Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't, you, why don't you make those available to us? Okay, get those out to us. Uh, have we got our Form 1782? When, when, was, when was our last 1782 form came out? That was in February. Can you make that available to us as well, 782? Yeah, I'm just making a list here. Um... So if I read this correctly, it's okay with you for us to come back in two weeks to get a final judgment on this. And I'm saying right up here. I'd very I would feel yes. more comfortable coming back next Monday if, if there's a, you know, I get from their impression that it's a sense of urgency. I'm, I'm willing but to then back. they tell us that, you know, uh, two weeks. I mean, I don't want anybody thinking we're the bad no. guys waiting for two weeks. It, it, it's, it's, you, you've heard uh, Russ Lloyd tell you that we could make payroll, which we were concerned about. We didn't know it was going to be kind of a firestorm to come in and ask to move money from basically our savings accounts to our checking accounts. This isn't a Had firestorm, sir. This is just healthy discussion. Oh, yeah, I got it. Sitting. It feels like a firestorm if you're sitting here. Well, I mean, <laughs> put on an asbestos vest. <laughs> So we didn't realize that. Or we didn't think it was it was something that had been done in all prior administrations. But not openly and transparently. This is a new system. Well, it was, and, and I agree. There are we, wrinkles we, in the system that we're trying to iron out together. If the accounts delusion. ordinance, if you didn't, if the accounts ordinance hadn't have been passed, we wouldn't be doing this. Yeah, of course. I, I think I think the point is is that maybe this should have been filed two weeks ago, so, so that all these questions could have been answered. But to come in. Uh, within a few days and say, hey, we need $8 million transferred. I, they're, they're responsible here, and, and they, they need yeah. these questions answered. And, you know, my concern is, is that if you, you know, if you insisted on vote tonight, you might, it might not pass. And so uh, the council's willing to call a special meeting to come back, <coughs> come back sooner than two weeks. Yep. We're willing, yeah. we're willing to come back in two weeks. That's a regularly scheduled meeting. We don't want to inconvenience anyone. So, so you know, th th if I may make a comment, just a comment. In cities, uh, I've gone out and reviewed their financial data, such as Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, and, and South Bend, all on CAFRs. That's, that's the accrual method of accounting. 
it makes it easy when you really see what your obligations are. It's just not a cash in, cash out deal. For instance, nobody in this room knows that we have, and you know this, Russ, we got a $234 million unfunded post-retiree health benefit that nobody in this room even knows about. And that, under, under, under the CAFR method, that's going to have to be booked. That gets eyeballs, Ryan, when we know that 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 is a big number. Okay, John, but that's not the issue. It is worrisome. It is, an issue. It is worrisome, but yes. But right now we're trying to figure out when to meet again. So you're going to come back in two weeks, yes, right? Sir. And you'll provide all the information to the finance people and myself right, and everybody right. here. Send it to the council as a whole. Send it to all council. Send it to yeah. council as a whole. So we're, for tonight, we're just going to table it until for two weeks. Thank you. Well, we're not sure we're going to vote on the budget in two weeks because we haven't heard back. We haven't heard back from the administration yet. Yeah. Okay, okay. We, I won't we, be here on got, the 28th. Uh, we've got to finish the summary sheets and we'll get those to you. But we've got good progress on the general fund. I think we've got it to where you're wanting. And R River Boat and LIT is going to fall short. <laughs> but you'll see. I gave you my number. <laughs> okay. Miscellaneous business. Uh, the next meeting. Oh, the um, I'll, just, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion then, and okay, just great. table it for two right. weeks. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Bill Frost. I live at 3700 Graff Road, and ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't have you guys' job for nothing in the world, but you're doing a great job. <laughs> I mean, for all the things, I always, I just like to have fun. So my, my thing is, is on September the 27th, the city of Evansville is going to have a city of Evansville uh, day at uh, Bush Stadium. Again, this is our fourth year. So I hope you all can, all the council can come to the game and enjoy the game. You get to uh, see a great game. You get a free hot dog and a drink. And you get a voucher for a game for next year for $30. So okay. it's and a great deal. It's a great family it. deal. Thank you. And uh, we, we always we're having a great time with it. And uh, I hope you all uh, come and uh, and enjoy a great game. And uh, don't worry about if you're Cardinal fans, don't worry about it because the Cardinals are going to be in the World Series, even <laughs> though they can't beat Cincinnati three out of four. Uh, and Cincinnati's in last place. But don't worry about it. The Cardinals are still going to be in uh, the World Series uh, in October. And so, can you, can thank you, get tickets where? Thank you very much. Th thank you very much. Uh, and pardon me. And the tickets can be gotten where? At Banterra Bank uh, on uh, on uh, at Cross Point is the only place. And I think uh, the guy told me yesterday we only got 60 left. Great. So and we had like 1,500. So wow. Uh, we always have a good time over there. People really enjoy it. They. They put us. Uh, they put it. Uh, City of Evansville on the on the big scoreboard, and they announced it on the field. And uh, last year, uh, the USI uh, baseball team won the national championship. The whole team got to go down on the field and be recognized as a whole team Great. last year. Awesome. Thank you. Sir. So thank you very much. What? <clears throat> yes, join us if you could. Actually, this is a fun job. <laughs> uh, Charlene Breaker, 1700 East Blackford, and Bernice is going to join me in this. Uh, I'm not going to ask any questions of the council. <laughs> uh, we just, uh, and oh, I did want to make the statement that uh, the tire issue, when I think of tire shops, I think of Rice's tires and Reese's. I don't always think of the bad tire shops. So thank you for passing that. I mean, it could be some, everybody had to start small. Yeah, but the incidence of failure small is really high. Yeah, yeah, I realize yeah. that, yes. I'm just yeah, go hopeful. Ahead, please. Um, Say your I think that the reason we're here is we, on the way home after the last council meeting, realized that we really missed an opportunity. And we wanted to thank you, uh, Dr. Adams, for giving people the opportunity to speak. I mean, it's been... Uh, sometimes the questions are repetitious, sometimes the answers are so obvious, but you never shut people down. And we as a community want to thank you for that because this is our last 
stand many times, as we saw tonight. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Bernice. Bernice Termenstein, 1636 East Blackford Avenue. I, too, want to thank you, Dr. Adams, for uh, making the comment that there would always be freedom of speech in this chamber. And I recall back in June 13, 2011, I spoke before the council admonishing some members of city council, not all, for being a puppet for the uh, present administration then. B.J. Watts, then president of the city council, um, said there will be no political statements and I was not permitted to say anything more. I felt that was a violation of my freedom of speech. So thank you, Dr. Adams. Well, I think this entire council supports that philosophy. I really do. Good. Yeah. Thank you all. Okay, the next meeting of the Common Council will be Monday, September. Uh, yeah, but we're supposed to go this way first, okay? Right. <laughs> we're supposed to say this first, right. okay? Okay, the next meeting of the Common Council will be Monday, September 28, uh, 2015 at 530. Committee meetings will start at 5 p.m. And now we have Gordon Digman. Please, tell us about this swimming pool. I uh, know, I was under the impression that you were going to be voting on closing the poles, our pools and that again. And if you are, I, I'd like for you to take and come and tell the hundred and some kids that take and show up at Helfrey Pool and that and take and tell them why you're closing the pool. Fair enough. Okay. George Lumley? Is that it? I'm George Lumley. I live at 1016 Brookline Drive in Evansville. Can you keep this to about three to five minutes? Sure. Charge? And uh, I'm concerned about the expenditures from riverboat funds under the appropriations for residential demolitions. It concerns me that you are considering gifting $1.5 million out of the riverboat fund to fund the expansion of the Brownfields land banking. I know Councilman O'Donnell spoke uh, pro-land banking earlier, and I know that um, the Garfields Commons presentation that they gave earlier that they're trying to fund uh, had land banked property for several, several years on Garfield. They finally cleared it off, but it's some of those agencies even that are land banking property and keeping structures from being torn down because we don't have the money to tear the structures down. So I've been slowly getting information on the brownfields who they want to make the land bank uh, enlarge it, and it appears that they're running an off-books extracurricular of the DMD. Uh, it appears that they've entered the real estate business and utilize city funds to pay expenses but keep revenues for special interest or per perks like an automobile for DMD employees. I question giving them $1.5 million out of the riverboat fund. I've been trying for months to get records on why our riverboat appropriations for residential demolition is resulting in so few demolitions. Although I've not been given the simple account activity, I was allowed last week to access some of the expenditures documenting char documentation charged to the Riverboat Residential Fund. Uh, here's a few of them for reference. We've got Morley Associates uh, providing inspection at the Helfrich Neighborhood Swimming Pool for $536. We've got All Stop Plumbing Services for putting in a new water service. No explanation given. No demolition in the area. If we had damaged it with dis demolition, our uh, contractors would have had insur <coughs> insurance. But that's $1,275. We've got Morley Associates again for inspection of a, a collapsed commercial building, 1500 North Heidelbach, the 
flea market building for $2,017. We've got Clinic Company uh, for the fence at the Owens Block, not a residential demolition, uh, $2,275. We've got Tri-State Fence Company for fencing at Miller Plating. That's not a residential demolition. $4,620. We've got Clinic Company for one day at the flea market on Heidelbach to put up a fence. That's not a commercial demolition, or a residential demolition, rather. $15,882 for the day. Uh, there's lots of charges every month that are just normal city operating charges uh, of hauling the trash off, R&R haul hauling. That should be out of D DMD where they charge people and put it on their taxes. And, you know, $240 at a time doesn't add up to very much. Uh, but for the month of August, there is a bill here for $10,397. So if you've got that hitting it every month, of course, you know, I'm sure the city gets reimbursed some of this, but it doesn't go to riverboat fund. It goes into operating fund. That's creative accounting. Um, one of the other creative things that I found is we, we had a federal grant that was supposed to demolition uh, houses and these are residential houses, but it was supposed to demolish residential houses in the floodplain. I haven't been able to see the actual grant or the accounting for it, uh, but the newspaper said it was paid 100% by the federal government. Um, but within the riverboat fund, we've got about $15,000 of charges for that grant. Now. If you're not charging that grant, but you're charged in the riverboat fund, I think that's one way that the Kelly Coors can find all this extra money. So I think that even though this is maybe micromanagement, when we're only appropriating 500000 for demolition and we're spending over 200000 on all these operating expenses that add up, and they're charged to that appropriation, I think something's wrong, and I think it needs to be fixed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, I got a question. I remember Brownfields. Who has a car? I need a new one. <laughs> I don't know what kind of perks they have exactly, but I was under the uh, rumor has it that they provide perks like cars. Well, that's just a rumor then, okay, thanks. Because I don't know who has a car on that board provided by Brownfield. I'll find out. You please do. And report, and report back to you. Yeah, because uh, I guess I've been discriminated against because I didn't get one. Just a rumor. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I was, I was told it was a DMD perks, not that the Brownfield board members are getting perks. Uh, I don't know anybody Thank in DMD that has a car. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other people from uh, the poor stragglers that are still here at 9 o'clock or almost 9 o'clock? Okay, committee reports. Okay, we got a bunch of things going on on the 28th. Beginning at 5 o'clock and then maybe every five minutes thereafter or so, we're going to hear various ordinances uh, beginning first with G2015-24, which is fixing salaries of every appointed, of appointed officer, employee, deputy assistant, departmental and institutional head of the city of Evansville, levy authority and salary administration proceedings. We'll then hear 2015-26, which is amending the housing trust fund. 2015-27, uh, amending the green uh, municipal code, uh, most particularly the Greenway Advisory Board. F2015-13 is moving money within the various city funds. Uh, F2015-16, fixing salaries of elected officials. F2015-17 F is appropriating money for the purpose of deferring expenditures in the city of Evansville for our beginning in January 16, which would be uh, the budget. Uh, 515, F2015-18 is uh, expenditures for the levy authority. And F2015-19 is for the port authority. 
And so that will all be heard on the 28th, uh, along with the resolution that we Sir. Uh, discussed. Sir, would you put your phone away? <laughs> oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, along with the resolution that we discussed earlier with regards to the transferring of funds, but I think that's probably going to come up later. And ASD that is committee? all. Yes, uh, Mr. President, starting promptly at 525 uh, will be G 2015-25. That's uh, amending section 6. 540 of the Evansville Municipal Code on Animal Control, and then simultaneously we'll hear G 2015-28, amending Section 91020 of the Evansville Municipal Code on Fireworks. Public Works Committee, Chairman. Let, let me ask one. What about the um, uh, the ordinance of uh, G? It was proposed point of night G 20 uh, 2015-22. We're going to hear that. No, we pushed it to October 12th just because of the volume of 28, of September 28th. Because oh, okay. it's going to be such a long night that... Chairman Lizzie? Yeah. I will do my part. There's yeah, no meeting scheduled this time. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? So be it. A sagebrush wilderness so vast it resembles an ocean. But in a land of travelers, one creature relies on the sage all year. Here, sage grouse gather and compete for attention. It's spring, and suddenly the sage is a sea of possibility. Big and wild and anything but empty. Africa's greatest treasures. There are very, very few places like this on the planet that today need saving. The park almost died. This is the story of a park's rebirth, an elephant's might, and a lion's will to survive. Because everything Gorongosa was, it will be again. felt from the beginning that it was uh, important to underwrite WNIN. In our personal lives, uh, we've been big supporters and uh, we wanted our business to be a supporter as well. WNIN's vision is to make the Tri-State a place for people to enjoy, to want to live, to be a part of, and that's our vision too. It just makes sense to partner with somebody who has the same ideas that we do. WNIN creates in me a desire to learn. I remember uh, watching shows like Nova and uh, uh, Joy of Painting, which um, you know kind of sparks my creative side. Sesame Street, that's one of the first memories. I think that really set a foundation, you know, just set the ball rolling. I feel like uh, they give so much to our community and um, we should help give back to them. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for all the latest happenings. PBS talks with Charlie Rose about his program, The Week.
it's about the experience we've had this week. Uh, looking at interviews we have done and say, what does it mean? And in a precise, finite way, answer that question. What's significant and what makes me better understand the world I live in? Hi, I'm Charlie Rose. Watch the week. Welcome to the 2015 Southwest Indiana Chambers Mayoral Candidate Forum, featuring Mayor Lloyd Winicky and State Representative Gail Reekin. Let's give them a big round of applause for being here. This election coverage can also be found on the Chambers website when that production is complete also, so look for it there. This morning's event will unfold like this. The first candidate will go, and that will be Gail Reekin. She will have uh, three minutes for an opening statement, and then she'll have 20 minutes for questions, and we will run through a series of questions. Then um, Mayor Lloyd Winicky will have three minutes for an opening statement, and then we'll run through questions there also. They'll each have a chance for a closing statement at the end. So what we're going to do is uh, begin the process here. And uh, we did a coin flip at the beginning, and Representative Reekin did win that coin flip, so she'll be going first. And uh, so we'll start off with an opening statement. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Um, I was raised in Evansville. Dad attended St. Boniface Church his entire childhood where he served as an altar boy. He often claimed as he was gro uh, to us as his children that he attended church for a lifetime as a child. Uh, he graduated from Rice High School uh, where he earned his way to college as the first Kiwanis Award winner in sports in Evansville. I tell you this story because much about me is about my family. I support access to women's health care because Dad gave up many hours with us, his kids, volunteering his time and talents in his profession as an OBGYN. Dad delivered over 17,000 babies here in the area. Mom grew up in an impoverished home, leaving her home in the eighth grade to live with another family as cook, cleaning girl, and caretaker for an invalid son. She did this to earn her way in high school. Mom's family were coal miners in southern Illinois, and when Grandpa was killed in a terrible mine explosion, the only person to respect Grandma's destitute position was civil rights leader John L. Lewis, who came to the mining camp and handed out money. Now you know why I support unions and associations. I am somewhat embarrassed to tell these personal stories, but I've been told you need to understand why I think the way I do. Why health care and women's and children's issues are so important that I co-founded the Art Crisis Child Care Facility years ago. That from the principle of doing the right thing, I led a nonprofit out of financial, extreme financial difficulty. And that I brought together a group of hospital and nursing homes in southeastern Indiana to train men and women on a career path to higher employment when I was a business specialist with workforce development. Because a living wage is very, very important. That in my old neighborhood association, I fought out of city landowners who didn't take care of their rental properties, hurting our pride in our neighborhood and the values of our homes. Why I authored and shepherded a bill in the state legislature, legislature to provide incentives for average working families to increase their savings to pay unexpected expenses, like a car that breaks down or an air conditioner that goes out, a bill that I was honored as Legislator of the Year by the Indiana Credit Union. Why I worked with State Prosecutors Council to redesign the Infant Mortality State Review Committee structure to decrease infant deaths. And why I spent a year working with other legislators to form the Commission on the Improvement of the Status of Children in Indiana. And I will receive an award this month for my work with children and families. I believe working for average working families is important. I believe that we are the backbone of this great city. I believe people can work together to accomplish great things like this grant. I believe people can meet government to assist children being neglected, whether it's streets or sewers or deteriorating houses. The city's resources must be fairly distributed throughout the city. I believe people who need bus service on Sunday and were promised to such a meeting I attended 
or people who live in Howe and were astonished to hear their bus service was going to be cut should be fairly represented by our mayor. I value open and transparent government where issues like those are discussed and well thought out plans are presented to the public for debate That includes as well finances of this city and leadership in managing those finances. The responsibility of the mayor and the mayor alone. Whether it's the beginning balances of the last three years that are reduced to 300000 or the money advanced from the utility department to, general, to the general fund to make the books look good, that is the mayor's responsibility. The question must be asked of the mayor, where did the money go? And when the mayor touts good jobs growth by a company receiving tax abatement and the company doesn't fulfill those jobs, the mayor needs to take the leadership role and establish better compliance monitoring. If companies receive ta incentives and are not paying the taxes because of those tax incentives, then the taxpayers must pay, and sometimes without receiving the benefit promised. My four years as mayor, when elected, will be to address the issues that concern all of us in Evansville. The streets, the roads, housing, sidewalks and sewers, jobs and increasing opportunity through promoting the medical school to other service and manufacturing industries, working with education to assure the training path to a good job in this field and other high demand fields, and developing opportunities for growth regionally due to our location as a logistical capital. I love Evansville. I have two daughters who live here and three grandchildren, soon to be four. I want to make sure we build a community that attracts their children and their grandchildren to live here just as it has kept me here. Thank you very much. Okay, Representative Regan, we're going to run through um, 10 questions we have for you, and we have 20 minutes for you. So again, uh, kind of the internal clock in your head is about two minutes apiece, uh, but use it as you choose to. The um, first question is, please give us some information about your background and experience and why that would enhance your ability to represent the citizens of the city of Evansville. Well, I think I've given you some uh, indication here, but I've had experience in both the private and public uh, uh, sectors of, um, of our industries as well, um, you know, working for, this, for the state and local government. I think uh, probably the recent experience of working in the um, state capitol has given a lot of encouraging, encouragement to what I would see as an extremely important initiative that we need to take a leadership role in southern Indiana and then is de developing a caucus, a, a very strong caucus in all across southern Indiana that becomes a block that has an effect on in the state legislature because there's one in there, there is central Indiana and there's northern Indiana and believe you me when things are done, they're done because those people get together and we need to be at the table and we need to do a better job. Um, I tried and I even came to, this, to the, the chamber um, to, to begin to do that uh, with Sue Elsperman. I intend to do it now through the, through the mayor's role. How would you specifically change the culture of city government for the better? Well, I think there has to be an open openness. And I heard transparency the other night referred to uh, just because people don't understand. Transparency is extremely important. Trustworthiness, being able to communicate, uh, getting people on board. I've done that for years in terms of building coalitions, and that's the way I would run government. Is that there need to be um, there needs to be more of a group and and groups of people who want to take uh, part in 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 designing the future of this community. Uh, and that's done with just your personality and the way that I, I work. And I can see that uh, transparency in particular, all the books need to be online. You meet, need to be able to see the budget. The budget is not online. That should have been online over a, a week and in some understandable form. And when I say books, I mean the checkbook for the city needs to be online. It is important that everyone know what we're doing, those people who want to know. Um, and and I, I would strongly do that. I also would take an initiative uh, that in, in blighted housing that we actually have uh, remediation past the point of just getting the, the houses, um, and that will be a, a process that will take everybody on board, both profit and nonprofit. Um, and I think the big thing that, that needs to be brought back into this realm is developing a strong relationship with education on every level and developing some gap financing for students who are falling in between 
uh, the cracks, those who don't get the gra grants and those parents uh, who make too much money, and cities are becoming involved in that. What is the issue or priority that will, you will pr pursue, regardless of the difficulty or the consequences, to your possible re-election should you be re-elected? In other words, what issue do you believe so strongly in you may take a political hit for, but you believe that Evansville needs it? Well, I think my background shows that when I feel something's right, I do it, whether or not I take a political hit. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of those issues along the line. There have been many of them. Um, I would say the one that would be the most difficult is how you're going to deal with uh, the finances and ongoing and, and decreasing the spending. We have to increase revenue. I fully am aware of that. But we have got to get a handle on the spending, and that is going to be extremely difficult and probably uh, uh, going to make a lot of unhappy people. How will you make Evansville more business friendly? When um, I've not had that problem uh, in dealing with business and industry throughout my life, so I don't know that I would have um, uh, that problem personally, but I do think there, is, there are a couple things that have to be done. I hear constantly of small business having problems getting permits or standing in line. Uh, we have got to do something um, about that whole process to speed it up. I've even heard of businesses that uh, were, not inter we're, we're almost just going to forget it. Um, so we've got to do something about that. We have to build a better relationship with the state ongoing because we're getting hurt by some per permitting processes in, on the state level. And we've got to have a better, um, what shall I say, relationship with the state ongoing. It's, on, it's just something working at it all the time that we're going to have to do to make sure uh, that our people are, are trusted here. I think we have to continue. If we're talking about incentives, we have to develop incentives. Um, and keep those incentives going for business as well, not just developing an industry that we're all thinking about, but the technology, manufacturing, and we've got to develop um, housing industry in, um, in, the, in Evansville itself. Describe a situation where you helped bring about consensus. How did you help the group reach consensus? Um, I would say that probably the last thing that um, I worked on, uh, the second to the last thing, um, what was very uh, was was about a year-long process in the state, and that was developing or restructuring the infant mortality um, uh, review committee, and that is because it's in all 92 cities, counties, and when you're when you're dealing with 92 counties and lots of different government officials, and you're putting the prosecutors in charge. Of a, of a system that maybe uh, they were part of but never in charge. Um, this, was, this was bringing people together. This was talking. It was a lot of conversation. It was understanding that the, the, the purpose of what we were doing was so important because we are, were a, one of the top three in the, in the nation in infant, infant mortality, and people judge our state by statistics like that, that it was extremely important to get past um, all the issues that we had to get past and, and, and come to consensus. And uh, that structure is in place now and is in place in all the counties, and some of the counties are working together. Evansville, over the last few years, has been dinged on some quality of life issues. We've all read the reports and magazine articles and things. What is your focus in terms of improving Evansville's quality of life? Quality of life is is uh, is one of those is an issue that I think you we look at at the top and we look at the at, we have to look be, below. Um, the quality of life in Evansville is directly related in many respects to our income level. Um, we have to be able to provide uh, those those opportunities for po for folks whether it's in tourism, whether it's in industry, whether it's our clean streets, whether it's our sewers. But we have to recognize that the people of Evansville must have an increase in their wage level to be able to afford the things that we need to provide as government and we need to provide each other. So when I look at quality of life, I look at the major issue and that is that we have got to develop living wage jobs in Evansville. What is your perspective on making investments in downtown and the master plan outcomes? My perspective, um, I'm not sure I understand, I understand that question. 
Well, what would be your vision, your perspective? What needs to be done downtown that maybe isn't being done or that you agree with? Oh, um, downtown is an integral part of, the, of our community for many reasons. Not only is it just the, uh, the, the banking sector and, and uh, now becoming an educational sector with signature schools, quite exciting. But downtown is our heart, it is our core, and we need to be able to uh, develop it, and it's going to feel, it's going to get a boom with absolutely a boom with the medical school. So my vision in particular to the downtown and is the medical school, and then also a, a, a totally forgotten resource that we seem to, do, to forget, um, and that is the river. We have to understand who we are and why the river was once so important to us and be able to develop it. It's not only industry that is tourism, but it's industry that is, um, let's say, uh, let's talk about a port. Uh, where can we put a port again? Uh, the Panama Canal having opened up, it, you're seeing a tremendous influx of um, uh, container barges up and down the Ohio River. We need to be able to capture that in our area. Paducah's already opened another one. This is a major opportunity for us. Uh, in, in our position. So we need to understand that not only is downtown downtown, but where it is located is on one of the most valuable resources we have that we have not truly tapped. Do you see an opportunity for an increased presence in bike and pedestrian infrastructure in Evansville? Please explain your answer. Absolutely. Um, I was an advocate of the Greenway. In fact, uh, Shirley James and I worked on the project, the Greenway, a long time ago, even before I became Parks Director. Uh, we became involved in it not only because it was important to establish greenways for health and transportation, but also because green, uh, we felt you need, we needed to clean up Pigeon Creek, and it was one another way to get Pigeon Creek cleaned up, which uh, has, still has a long way to go. Um, transportation is very important, and I do feel that as we develop either on street or uh, back road uh, uh, connectivity with with the greenways and and, and our bikeways. We're going to see that. I'm I have a lot of trouble what, seeing some of the bicyclers next to me, and I you know if I'm driving on the street, um, and I've been in other communities where bicyclers aren't necessarily on those busiest streets. So I I think that needs to be revisited a little bit. Uh, but I will tell you because there are great ways to get people around and not necessarily put them on the busiest streets. Uh, but we do need to look at it that way. High rail is extremely important, and we tried a long time ago to get high rail done and worked on it. It's been in the plan, and I'm really pleased that high rail is going to finally be uh, developed into part of that connectivity because it truly is, is, is connecting neighborhoods to downtown and business and jobs. What do you consider the top transportation and infrastructure priorities for southwest Indiana? Well, the top one's I-69, I and mean, we've got to make sure that we get it all the way to Indianapolis. Um, I'm really excited what we've done, uh, and, and, and we're going to see more of it open, and that is, that is extremely important. Not only do we need to, to make sure that we get that last leg done, but we need to constantly remind everybody we've got a bridge that needs to be uh, built, and I, I know everybody understands that. Um, when, when you look at I-69, I, I don't think we can, we, that, that we can forget uh, that we have internal transportation issues that have a lot to do with getting people back and forth to work and be people back and forth to school. And we really must take note of that and we really must make sure that whatever is developed in the new plan prioritize for, prioritizes work and school. Uh, those, those are major issues. And funding those uh, buses, we've got to reach out for grants. There have been grants that we haven't taken advantage of, that we need to take advantage of. We need to expand the opportunities for people getting back and forth. This question requires you to think out in the future quite a bit and be reflective before you even have a chance to possibly be the mayor of Evansville. But what would you hope your legacy would be, say, in 2030, if you were given the chance to be elected on November 3rd, 2015. In other words, what, what is it that you'd really like to see as your legacy? What would you bring to being mayor that would live on for years and years? I've always felt that the, uh, the greatest thing that we can give each other is opportunity, whether it's opportunity for, uh, for children and a, a happy childhood, a healthy childhood, or for 
education, uh, the opportunity to go to school, um, or a good job, uh, that's what I would hope my legacy would be, is that I have somehow made advances that have given more people the opportunity. Um, Ivy Tech was an extremely disappointing situation. Um, I can't imagine that with most of the people that are on the team um, that represent the supermajority and the, uh, the, the mayor's office and the governor, we couldn't get Ivy Tech here. And that would have been the greatest benefit to the people in this area. To them, 1,700 students, I think. It was about 70% of the student population. We must and I will continue to work on that every day. I was with Senator Kinley. Um, I will be continuing to talk with Senator Kinley. He's given me an idea of what he thinks is going to happen. And I will, I will continue that relationship. It's an opportunity. I hope that people remember that I've given them the opportunity to be the best that they can be. Great. Thank you. Those are your questions. Thank you. We're going to turn to Mayor Winicky here. If I don't fall off the back of the uh, podium, <laughs> give it a little bit here. Um, you, again, you'll have 20 um, minutes for your questions, but you have an opening statement for uh, five minutes. Okay. Good morning, Brad. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. Uh, really appreciate the Chamber's uh, reaching out to Representative Rico and I to give us this opportunity to explain our visions for the future of the city. Um, four years ago, I ran for mayor because I wanted to give back to the city in a way that I had never been able to give back before. Uh, I wanted to be, give back to the city that I love, that I was born and raised in, I met my wife in, I raised my daughter in, and I look back now, four years later, wow, how far we've come. It's a true, it's been a true honor to be your mayor these last four years. And the reason's really pretty simple. We have, we've, got a, we've got a great city. We've got a city with great people. We have people who are committed to work together, committed to make Evansville more broad, committed to uh, see Evansville grow. And that's just been, uh, it's, it's humbling. And the last four years have been truly a blessing uh, for both Carol and I. Uh, on every corner, I see new focus and I see new energy. Whether it's downtown, the east side, the north side, I see it, I feel it, and I think most of you in this room feel it. And it's truly phenomenal to see how exciting, uh, how far Evansville's come in terms of just its own mindset in these last four years. Uh, we have a, a growing economy, uh, we have a strong financial foundation, and we have projects that are going on now that are just going to change the face of Evansville forever. Many of the community leaders in this room have been pivotal partners with us. And that's why we're enjoying the momentum and the success we are. So to those of you who have been a part of those projects, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart personally, and thank you from, on behalf of the entire citizens of the city of Evansville. And we'll be back to ask you for, to, to do more. So I thank you for what you'll do, I know, in the future. Uh, our city is blessed to have the lowest unemployment rate in, in five years. Uh, we have new opportunities that are sprouting up all over. We have new shops. We have franchises that are popping up from uh, downtown to Washington Square Mall to North Green River Road. We have local businesses that are expanding and growing. We have worldwide companies that have moved to Evansville, investing millions of dollars and creating high-paying jobs at Evansville. A lot going on. This consistent growth is going to be the foundation, the tax base for our financial foundation. Uh, with each city budget that we presented, we have attempted to be good stewards of the uh, taxpayers' money, and as a result, we've made sound investments for the city's future. Now, there is no doubt in my mind that our city is heading in the right direction, but I think the best is yet to come. If you look back at what, what has happened in the last 10 days and what's about to happen, I think you have a window into the future if we stay on the current course. So just recently, construction uh, finally began on our downtown convention hotel. This hotel will bring visitors to our city, it will bring revenue to our city, and it will create jobs. Yesterday, we unveiled the new Cloverleaf at US 41 and the Lloyd Expressway, a project that came in on time. We just broke ground for it last October, and here we are yes, less than a year later celebrating its success. We took two lights off the Lloyd Expressway. 
Thank goodness uh, my predecessor stood up and said no to NDOT in 2011 when they wanted to put those light, lights on US-41. We didn't need any more lights. So right now, we have a major transportation improvement that's happened in literally less than a year and that's already improving uh, flow of traffic through our city. And sometime in the next month, ground will be broken, site work will begin on what many people believe will be the most transformative project in our city's history, the IU Med School. I'm told that today, Indiana University will send out an invitation for a groundbreaking that will occur on October 23rd, pending the release of the state money by the State Budget Committee. <clears throat> that will be a huge day in the city of Evansville. A huge day. Um, so those are three steps forward for our city. Three huge steps forward. Uh, and I, I dare say that they are projects that are, are going to help change how we think about ourselves as a community. And uh, it's been my pleasure to be along for the ride. And uh, I look forward to helping be a part of the ride for the next four years. And with that, I'll be happy to answer the questions. Great, thank you. First question, please give us some information on your background and experience, particularly as the incumbent mayor, that would allow you to represent the city's citizens going forward. Well, um, I've been at the table for all the big projects that I've just described and all the many pro smaller projects that uh, are brought to us during the course of time. I, I think I have a unique gift of being a problem solver. There aren't many people that come into the mayor's office and say, hey, I've got a solution for a problem you don't even have. <laughs> it just doesn't happen all that often. Uh, so I think I have that unique ability to sit down with people, even when they don't agree with me from a policy perspective, they respect the fact that I listen to them. And I think the fact that uh, we've been able to build coalitions of people uh, to have great dialogue. Uh, one, of the, one of our goals when we came into office was to build a community that has more respectful dialogue in the city. We've been able to do that with Leadership Evansville and uh, other folks around the city. So I think it's my collaborative leadership style and um, that, that, I, that I think people recognize and our accessibility. How would you specifically change the culture of city government if you continue on? I know you've worked on some of it, but what, what, what's left to be done in your mind? There's always work to be done to change a culture. You don't come into office and change a culture like that. Uh, one of the directives that I've given many of our department heads is to be more uh, user-friendly, be more business-friendly. Uh, there are efforts underway to make permitting more one-stop oriented, but it takes, uh, it takes money, it takes time, uh, and it takes a change of mindset. Uh, I'll tell you one thing that we have done that has been met with great success on a monthly basis. We sit down with SIBA, the Southwest Indiana Builders Association, and we bring in the utility department, we bring in the city engineer's office, and we bring in um, uh, other, we brought in Evansville Cable TV or the Cable TV franchises, and we sit down.